Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Shuffle Bus. I'm your host, Jesse. And with me, as always, is my good friend and co-host, Neil. Neil, how are you tonight? Good, man. I'm, I'm with you. Man, I'm with you. I've, I've been... For whatever reason, I think the time zone thing really messes with people. And uh, I don't know why. <laughs> uh, well, maybe both. <laughs> I, I, I just mean daylight savings time, like in general, just throws your internal clock off. Nice, man. Oh, that's cool. Right. Okay. Mm hmm Right. Yeah, it, it's... Outlook is the worst. Outlook is the absolute worst at handling time zones. I'll, I, I, I could go on a whole rant about that. Unfortunately, we're not going to have time for that normal lead-in banter that we would normally have. We're not going to have time for tonight because we've got uh, Inquisitor and Creep Dog right at the top of the show here for round six action. <laughs> right. Well, I, I feel like he just brings his opponents kicking and screaming into our stream, which I appreciate. <laughs> sure, go ahead. Go for it. I, I'm sure Jason won't care. He's like, I'm in. I'm in. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the sorry, a dinner party. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he's he, he's so handsome. He's dashing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, you're you're hundred percent right. Hundred percent. All right. Well, let's uh, let's cut over to the game here. Um, I bet your audio was dead there, and I'm so sorry for that. So. All your Beastmaster jokes just got, got God, put in there. Yeah. They were so good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's cut over. Let's let them know they can take off here. Um, and uh, we, we could talk more about Leo as the Beastmaster and, uh, you know, go from there. But, you know, Leo is interesting to me uh, as a whole because he, he sort of lends himself to a build style automatic. But we, we've seen a lot of Leo decks in the okay. last few seasons that are not exactly um, on the mill plan. They have it as like a secondary win con. And, and right. you, you're, you're always like milling your opponent because of Glowfinch. And Glowfinch is so efficient at doing it. Like, it's essentially the best actual put cards from your deck into your discard pile card in the game sure um you know obviously that's not I, I guess maybe cobra is better now but if we're only taking into account like cost for cards milled the glowfinch is better cobra is a better card all around inquisitor just rolls hot as all get up here with creep dog wow. rolling six basics but inquisitor is getting three power sides on those charm uh, knowing the Inquisitor's deck has that Cobra, I'm sure he loves to see those come up like that. Uh, oh, yeah. Cre I mean, Cream Dog is doing a couple of meditations here to pull up uh, some Sympathy Dice and a 
fallen as uh, she has chosen to go uh, first here. So okay. makes and, a third uh, meditation into the nature's wrath. Both of these decks are decks that can and have started Magic Siphon uh, mm-hmm. many times. Um, the dueling Magic Siphons are interesting. Crave Dog going with a real aggressive Huntmaster open. Be interesting to see if she values this as a race with the Inquisitor deck mostly being a burned list. I mean, we've seen this list a few times on stream now. Uh, certainly Inquisitor can reach an Aerodel 16 health when uh, you have a Phoenix Born that is able to reach for burn through the anguishes and all the other components, you know, sympathy pains and, and such. This this is a solid way to sort of put damage and, and try to race as well as you possibly can. Yeah, I, I don't think that... I I don't think that racing in round one is good for any deck other than like soul burn decks. Sure. Uh, we do see we do see a single meditate to bring one of those ceremonial dice up. Probably lends us to believe uh, maybe there's a blood archer in hand, and we know Inquisitor loves blood archer, but he has, uh, does lose an he anguish has in that meditate. Master vampire also. Um, so it could be a master vampire or a blood archer which, here. Which Master Vampire is a card that we've actually seen him first five in previous right uh, sections of this. I I think the Master Vampire is better. Um, just going just, for that double we're night just, open. We're just running out guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I like this Hammer Knight here. There, there's a few reasons why I like it. One, um, if Inquisitor goes ahead and plays like a Master Vamp here, um, you've got pressure. You've got ability to pressure the vamp through like a panther spirit water blast. Um, and so he's going to play the flock shepherd. This is an interesting play here. Well, so this, this essentially is just like, he wants the, uh, the owl to survive water blast is, I, I assume why he starts flock shepherd against Right. Him, you know? But yeah, that's an interesting decision. Do you take hammer knight into flock shepherd and force the Leo guard? Um, or force the Glowfinch, or do you... I, I guess you can slow play here a little bit on Inquisitor. No doubt. I do think um, that you probably had to do one side action to the Shepherd if you're going to open up the Owl. Well, that's that's assuming you want to Water Blast it. Like, if... So, if he attacks Shepherd, then he his next action could just be like... And, and this didn't happen, obviously. Right. But... Uh, I guess because of the Glowfinch, you still can't attack Three-Eyed. So the Owl's going to eat here. Yeah, it's going to no get one card. Um, yeah, this this feels like a miscalculation by the Aerodel, uh, unless unless this is an ally. No, because the, the Ceremonial Wheels have already been spent. It's a, so. It is a Raptor Herder. Yeah, so, so. This, this feels like a little bit of a miscalculation, uh, just like playing under the assumption that you're going to get the Owl with Water Blast. So, interestingly enough, she did not meditate into that. So, I think she's still in a good position here, Creep Dog, as far as that last. I mean, you're stranding one die she didn't, on that owl. She didn't activate sympathy magic, right? Like, that, that's what I think should have happened was, uh, oh, I guess, but then you couldn't make Salamander. Yeah, um, I, think, I think I'd try to pressure with this Panther Spirit into the Flock Shepherd. Now that the owl's been eaten... You can, I wouldn't like, send any one any one ones into the flock shepherd. Well, so if you, I mean, if, if they counter, then the the ability's turned off, right? Um, so now you can you can get the ruby cobra. So if you don't, you get a free one damage, then you have the opportunity to uh, water blast. I, I think you're supposed to attack flock shepherd with hammer knight. Like it's probably true to start at least. Because... But that's going to just get a glowfinch. Well, right? and the glowfinch just... is going to counter for two damage. Yeah, but who cares? Like you have a butterfly monk in your own guard, so the damage on Hammer Knight back doesn't matter. If sure. they, they, I assume that the Leo would guard because you don't want to let him have the, the aftershock. Because if he attacks Glowfinch box, he aftershocks the Flock Shepherd. Then all of a sudden, the all these one ones with the guide, threaten the Shepherd. Sure. Yeah, we'll see how um, how Creep so Dog navigates this. What what happened here? Uh, Creep Dog put Salamander Monk in play, and it's still her turn, so we're waiting on her to... How is there a... 
Oh, okay. The water blast hit the flock shepherd. I think that's fine. Yeah. Um, again, this just like opens up the the uh play here of attack it with a one one. The only reason I'm not super high on that play is because your opponent's still gonna make a Ruby Cobra and probably a knight of their own. But I guess you can use the Panther Spirit and then kill the Shepherd or get the Glowfinch to block. It's it's uh it's tricky here. Yeah, I mean the Leo only has so many guards. I assume that if the Flock Shepherd gets attacked by one by Panther Butter or one of the monks, that Inquisitor will just let it go. Yeah. Because the the Flock Shepherd ability has already done its job by allowing the owl to get a card. Sure. Now with the water blast down, especially. Like, you can just let this card go. Yeah, I agree with Carl's assessment here. He says, attacking with Hammer Knight means you get two damage on Hammer Knight if Jason's starting Master Vamp. That's big. Yeah, so this is the Blood Archer open that we suspected seeing him ping off the Butterfly Monk. Um, now, I think, now I think if I was Creep Dog, I would guide the Panther Spirit into that Blood Archer. Um, or guide the... Uh, guide the Salamander Monk into the Blood Archer because the Glowfinch will kill the Salamander Monk on the counter. And then you get your Spirit attack still. So you get like a double, you definitely get a double guide here out of that play line. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I I think that that's a fine attack. I, so here's the Panther Spirit. For sure. Yeah, I... Yeah, I can't. I can't imagine that this is going to be attack at the at the Panther Spirit this, at this point. This Blood Archer is going to go absolutely bonkers this turn. Maybe. Like, what do you mean? Maybe it's going to get to kill another unit. Like, and it has two guards behind it. Like, it, it well, may not survive, but it's going to eat up like ten resources. I don't think it's going to do that well because the Airedale still got the guard up. Yeah, but I definitely agree that the water blast was a little premature into that flock shepherd. Um. Right, you kind of have to like put him on night uh, when he has so many dice left and two cards. Mm-hmm. I'm interested to see if this last card is Imperial Ninja because I'm trying to think of things he could spend to charm on. It's it's definitely Imperial Ninja. It just has basically no effect on the game. Well, state. I mean, it could it could also be like violinist. And so we just see the like, Leo guard. Charm he he doesn't use the Glowfinch there. Just goes ahead and goes straight to the Leo guard. I guess values. I guess values being able to ping that salamander monk away here with the blood archer, which is probably fine. But you do risk now, like you can attack sequence hammer knight into the flock shepherd and get aftershock on the blood well, archer if he uses the blood archer here. So if he blood archers, you should attack blood archer with the monk spirit. Sure. If he. Uh, If he doesn't Blood Archer, then you should guide the monk, the monk and attack the Blood Archer, I think. Pretty wild open for both of these players here. Um, I think if I was Creep Dog, I'd also be bringing up that Nature die, because you could take the Glowfinch out of the sequence altogether. Yeah, he's just been side action strained because uh, of the guides. Sure. So we'll see what Inquisitor's plan is here. He uses Blood Archer to place one wound on... Most likely the Salamander Monk, I would think. Yep, that's what happens. <clears throat> and then he's going to attack. This will get the Airedale Guard for sure. Right. I mean, I I guess you can counter, but no, because you want to pressure his guard. Right. Like his, his uh, unit guard. Um. Yeah, I, I really think I. Th- I mean, yeah, because you're yeah. you're just you're not going to do a better guard than that probably because presumably the only guy you can have left is Imperial Ninja. Like right. that's like the most power you could put in the board is one off Cobra, uh, that you can kill the Cobra for sure. So um, now now you take your Salamander Monk Spirit and you go into you don't even need to uh, guide it because you can save right. that Hammer Knight guide here and now you can meditate to make a Nature Ping. Right. And so Even, values the shepherd. I don't like this at all. That's I yeah, mean, I, I guess I guess you still have Hammer Knight, so like the Hammer Knight's gonna get to attack something and you can ping the um Yeah, I mean ping the archer. The problem with that is that if his last card is Golden Bill, you get annihilated. 
Sure. I, I don't think he's probably started a Golden Veil against this but lineup. It, it's but... just, there's no reason to, like, like, play around that, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, like... Like, there's a sequence here where the Hammer Knight can get turned down to two attack, or the Huntmaster can get turned down to one attack. And that's a that's a that's a potential issue, just because right. of the, I, the one thing that uh, one thing that I would say is uh, it is possible that this is a Golden Veil or a violinist because the other text on Cobra is actually really big here, mm -hmm. where if he makes a Cobra and side actions like uh, Charm Dice on the Hammer Knight. Uh, or whatever's left to attack the Cobra, it's pretty good. Yeah, so Carl says smart play. I agree, Carl. I don't think it was right to attack with either of the Knights in that sequence. I think it was appropriate to to uh, take care of the Blood Archer before you get a free point of damage on either the Huntmaster or the Hammer Knight and allows the Imperial Ninja to kill uh, the Huntmaster, I guess, in this case, is yeah, the most this, likely target. Carl, Carl makes a good point that the, that getting rid of the... Um, the shepherd stops two damage on the hammer knight, but I think that he's going to guard the the blood archer if you attack it with that monk anyway. So then you're not really losing anything, right? You, you take the you take the only O two blocker out of the sequence on the monk so, spirit. Now we'll see if he okay. So he does not side action charm power. So if I'm but now you're now you're free to attack because the unit guard isn't going to crack you. Back. I st I still think Creepbug probably on that last attack after getting that attack through should have meditated into a nature die just to clear the blow range. It, it feels like that might have been a a slight slight miscalculation here uh, that would have really put you up on board. Right. Um, I mean, yeah, because you can't really pass. Uh, no, no, and you don't want this Cobra coming in even for a, a point or two of damage. And then, like you said well, earlier... That, that can't be stopped now. Well, I guess I guess if he, if can, he had meditated for Frog, then uh, um, then nothing stops the Cobra death, but... Well, because if, if she had meditated for Frog, then she clears the Glowfinch and clears Archer and Cobra with a Hammer Knight attack here. Right, And then clears yeah, the Owl I mean, on the Huntmaster. That, that seems like a miss. Um... Which is unfortunate because I don't think that died. I mean, I guess that you can attack here, like you attack Cobra with Huntmaster, maybe. Um, no, because well, yeah, the, so the way this you attack Cobra with Huntmaster, see if the Glowfinch blocks, um, and if it does, which I assume it will, you get milled. You can meditate to Frog then, and then next turn you can still Hammer Knight Owl Ping Guy or Hammer Knight. Imperial Ninja, if that's what he plays. Well, no matter what, and that sequence, the, you're going to be left with the Cobra or or the Owl in play. Whereas Why? before, because oh, yeah, you'd, you'd be left with three-eyed Owl for sure. Right. So, but in this other the other path, if they if if Kreev had seen it earlier, she would have been able to clear the the Finch because the unit guard is used up. Eat the Cobra on the Huntmaster attack. Hammer Knight attacks Owl and kills Archer and Owl, and you're left with Huntmaster Hammer Knight while your opponent has nothing on board. No, they would keep an O2. I don't, you don't think have so. enough attacks to kill them all. She's just going straight to face here. I'm not sure I, I like this attack at all, but you're guess... leaving yourself like very vulnerable to becoming overwhelmed. Like So this this um the Hammer Knight's gonna get blocked, that will kill the archer for sure. I wouldn't even block Hammer Knight. Like mm -mm. I think if I was Inquisitor, I just let I just take this damage. Because well, you can choose to block Huntmaster if you want just to get the mill off. Sure. Um, but I wouldn't block Hammer Knight so you don't get the Aftershock. See, yeah. Carl's asking the same thing. Um, because if, yeah. Uh, yeah, see, now you lose your Archer when right. you didn't have to. But you were probably going to lose your Archer anyways. Um, just... Right, but, but now... And and again, we didn't see the meditate to frog, which I think is crazy. But uh, I guess valuing uh, overall, just valuing you know 
cards in deck against a potential mill. But I don't think this game's going to go to decking. Oh, mind fog owl. Okay, yeah. This it should have. I should have known this was what it was for sure. Um. So the mind fog owl is going to because this outlaster is going to die too now. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's a, a a pretty big miscalculation on Creep Dog's part to to. Yeah, send. it's it's pretty. Uh, that's that's rough. I mean, it's not a it's not a super obvious line, right? But you're playing face up, so you're not like tricking your opponent with anything, right? Um, that should and see this going to round two here, though. Right. Any, she has a hammer, and I didn't play. So she's only down by one dice worth of guys, but leaving the Cobra and the three eyed owl in play against the mill deck, like, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're when, gonna get, you're, you're only... gonna get behind on milling guys because now that you're gonna have to contend with two snakes and two owls this turn. And I don't think, I mean, I I don't know. Does Creep Dog have any really good AOEs, Nature's Wrath, anything like that? There's two Nature's Wraths. Um, but obviously the guys that are all in play are very resilient to nature's wrath. Like, right. Obviously also water blast is always in play. Um, and inquisitor needs to decide which of, and he chooses that out with this card is the best thing. Cause one of, one of these other guys I assume will be water blast immediately. So gets, gets to eat an adrenaline rush. Yeah. I, it's possible that like maybe that's a card you should try to play this turn since you have a hammer in play, but maybe not. Yeah, it's it's um obviously like adrenaline rush on hammer Knight is pretty crazy good just because you've got the opportunity of um of doing things. But yeah, here comes the glowfinch. So we got owl glowfinch from the Leo. Um, you know, I, I I guess what I looked at here is I mean adrenaline rush is dangerous if you have your opponent on fester. So we have an ice trap on the on the finch. finch. It mills a choke and a hammer knight. Yep. I I do like that ice trap use here because the finch does create some issue for you. It's now, if I didn't have the hammer knight in play, I don't think I would do that. I think I would rather hit the cobra or the the mind fog. Well, definitely the mind fog is the biggest but, impact. Uh, right? It represents no. Damage. I don't think I think the cobra is better. Because you have a hammer knight in play, and and you can make guys on the board. Like you, I think you're more likely to lose the game to not having cards to draw than to taking two damage. Yeah, the big problem with the mind fog is is it's just unblockable, right? So, like you create, it's kind of unblockable. Well, it, I, it definitely is if you outnumber your opponent on attacks. Right, which which is a situation we could see. But not for a while. Like there's, there will be other things that happen this turn, and uh, I, I mean, we're gonna get a, a three eyed that I think will not be attacking. We're gonna get a cobra and a mind fog. Um, so it goes ahead and eats the cobra. I think that's fine. Valuing the card over, over anything. I, again, else I, I think the cobra is at in this juncture of the game is more dangerous than the mind fog. Man, I I am, you know, I'd love to see generosity in Airedale. I know it's two dice, but I mean, two dice for super ping seems pretty good. I know you have the generosity cost, but that's that's a it's small price fine. to play. So we're about twenty minutes into the game at this point, um, but obviously uh, the Airedale player's deck is already down to twelve. You've got a yeah, hand of mean, three, so there's 15 cards to to fatigue damage here. Yeah, this, is the three eyed. Yeah, this is tricky. I mean, this three eyed is going to eat another card. There's, I don't think there's a card on the deck that kills it. Uh, I guess he could molten gold it, but <laughs> that's not really where you want to be. No, I don't think so. Uh, she does have okay. a frostbite here. Frostbites will allow you to get back into this game. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, it makes the Nature's Wrath a lot more impactful does when you have like additional pings. Does met away a sympathy pain? Bring up that ceremonial die. Most likely, I'm guessing to grab Raptor Herder here. 
the double ceremonial. Are we sitting on widows? Uh, it could be. Um, there's there's no widows. Okay. Uh, final cries maybe. There's no final cries. Okay. Um, the other hammer knight's dead. It could be adrenaline rush. Or choke or blood chains. Does meditate a molten gold away to bring up a, a nature power as well. Yeah, I, I mean, on top of getting milled pretty savagely in round one, uh, she also rolled, I think, 10 basics in the first two turns. So discards the. It's pretty yeah. rough. Discards the. Uh... Second adrenaline rush here to the second three eyed owl. These owls are just doing work here. Carl thinks we've got another hunt master potential play, or a clue does, excuse me. Sorry, clue. And I didn't mean to have you be misrepresented as Carol here. Um, for all of yeah, you that I, missed I the, mean, this... the takeover stream, that's that's Carl's new name in on Shuffle Bus Stream Nights is Carol. <laughs> this uh Okay, so we have a choke. Is that what happened? Or they discarded? Um, you can't choke here. Well, she could have choked. Yeah, she did choke. Or no, what did what happened here? No. Switch to manual mode. I think she tried to choke and can't do it. And now because, we're running it back. Yeah, because the uh or their the finch has already been played. Discarded the wrong card, not sure. Yeah, I mean Obviously, you can't roll it back too far, but choke would have been the card you wanted to discard here. Although going first top around, I guess if you can hold this choke, you can choke the Leo away from a finch next turn. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm not sure. I mean, we, we know it's a choke now, but even not knowing it's a choke, I think maybe just like four dice Hammer Knight is one of the best things that she could do. So uh, just like... Ceremonial power, Hammer Knight, play Hammer Knight. Is it Hammer Knight or Hunt Master? Which one do you think is better here in this situation with a bunch of two life units on the board and coming into play? Hammer Knight, I think. I I just assume that because you can... Hammer I, Knight can sit there and like they can never attack. I guess maybe you lose to Owls that way. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I think like to me... I guess the Hunt Master like pressures the guard a little more but the hunt master definitely pressures the guard an immense amount but i mean only one more than hammer knight would but that's a big deal right now when your opponent's up on board for, from you because we know that inquisitors only spent two dice eight dice remaining to five dice remaining for creve dog right like, i mean that that's why i think that uh and she does bring back a raptor herder here so she takes a point of damage for a raptor okay i think i like the that. raptor better than the the hunt master probably i mean because you can still get hunt master back i guess i don't know it's it's rough how many blood archers is the leo deck running two okay that so, i mean blood archer and violinist are the reason that you don't want to get hunt master well uh i mean raptors just as I mean, Raptor's just as bad or worse. No, because Raptor's only one dice. And and essentially, I'm making this point to as to why I would pick Hammer Knight. Uh, because Hammer Knight doesn't get annihilated by the, the two pingers in the deck. Sure. Um, I think that's a reasonable assessment. But, but. I, I also think that Raptor is probably better against both those cards also. There's because, Imperial uh, Ninja. This will pressure the hand. Or more mill, one way or the other. What a weird card. Is this what this card did at 1.0, or did they change it? I don't know. We'd have to have one of the legacy guys comment on that. Yeah, it's, it's just a very strange effect. I do like the ninja. Uh, I think it's a, it's a cool card, cool effect. Um, so here's Raptor Herder. The good news here is, is you, you're not going to get Enchanted Violinist yet because he doesn't have the dice to play the Violinist and use the play. Right. So you're still in pretty good position here to take advantage of a wide board and attack with like Salamander, Raptor, or Raptor Hatchling. Yeah, Although I, I, I mean, 
I don't think you can attack here. Like, I guess maybe if you send. Well, if you do send Lumberford the squad, Raptor. If you send the squad, like not the whole squad. I think you got to leave that Hammer Knight back. But if you send the whole squad, like it probably still forces a little bit of a guard because I don't think the Leo player wants to take four damage. But maybe you do take the four damage and just say I'm okay with that. I'm still eleven away from dying and. The the thing is that you're you're trading four for some I don't know. So ninja's gonna attack the butterfly monk. Here's the clear's attack. I'm gonna random kind of from sand. Okay, so this is gonna see the choke. Yep. And and discard the choke because one is better than two. Right. Um. I would imagine we'll get the counter here from the butterfly monk and a heal. Oh yeah. Um. Which I think, like, I think this is fine with both players. Uh... All right, so we do see the counter into the ninja. See the mend on the Aerodel. I, I, I still think the best course of action here is you could pressure, you can make an early guard pressure with the Raptor Herder here into the Imperial Ninja. Like, you can force the Leo to guard, and that really opens up your Hammer Knight to do big things. Yeah, I, I think, again, I think you probably just let Ninja go, but maybe you guard. Well, I don't know. It, with I mean, no cards in hand, like, I guess you guard it. I, I think that if I was sitting in the Leo's chair right now with both books tapped, no cards in hand, and six I, would, dice. I would just save the Leo guard for Hammer Knight 100%. It doesn't matter what other attacks happen. I'm sure. just going to take three from Hammer Knight so that I don't get Aftershock. So we're just going to see an all-out attack here, it looks like, or some part of an attack to trigger that group tactics on the Hatchling. Yeah, and and this is an interesting, like... Oh, it's it's everything but the Salamander Monk. That's really interesting. Man, if he has Pinger, you're in a lot of trouble here. I, I mean, I guess that he kind of has to block something. I well, I mean, if, if you're really... If, if you're calculating damage, you probably put Mind Fog in front of Hammer Knight. Right, and you just take three. And you lose the ninja in that exchange, but, like, okay. I think I, I, I just, I don't know. It depends on if you think you're going to win the race. I The easy block is fought Mind Fog on Herder. But well, he, if I you mean, think you're going to win the race, then you just, like, take it and fight back. Well, Inquisitor is winning the race on Mill alone here. Well, we, uh, we've seen this deck mill somebody really fast in two games on stream and then lose sure because it doesn't actually have any of the things that pressure the life total after the the deck is empty right so I don't, I don't think that you can say that that race affects the actual damage race until we're not drawing which this airedale deck unfortunately because of like the nature of it's just a battlefield deck so it has to kind of play cards from its hand gonna block the hatch bolts. lane with mind fog that's interesting so he must not have the pings or easy ways to Deal yeah, damage so to this hammer we're just, knight. We're just like saying mind fog gains two life uh here. Right. And trying to save the Imperial Ninja, I guess. Yep. So I do think this was a dangerous resolution to resolve the Phoenix Barn damage. Yeah, you first. Should, you should kill the mind fog first because obviously the, you're uh, not you're not up on sympathy pain, but just as a practice whenever you're up oh, against Charlie. It didn't matter then because of the no. dice that were shown. No, but I think you, you just want to get in the proper mindset for how to resolve damage against potential sympathy pains. And there, it makes no fundamental difference how you resolve that damage there in this attack. So it's just a good practice opportunity. Well, the important thing is that you like, uh, you're just aware of it. So if you look at your opponent's dice and see that you can't sympathy pain and then just click your guys through, that's fine too. Uh, it, I don't know that you, that that would be my thinking anyway. Sure. Obviously, we, if they're showing the dice, you should care about the order. But so Creep Dog is bringing back another Raptor. This a is lot a lot of pressure. I I just don't think you're being very dice efficient when you could because now you could have a a Hunt Master. Yeah. Like making Hunt Master here probably ends up being more value in terms of just pressuring the Leo guard and removing some of these threats from the battlefield. 
especially where you're going to go first top of the round. Like, you had a real opportunity potentially to clear the even battlefield. Just, even just attacking, like, it's the same amount of damage as a Raptor. You just get a 2-3 instead of a 0-1. Right. Like, if you're just going face. Okay, well, yeah, if you're, going dies, face, guess, you, but like, if you're going face, you get 5 damage versus 4. So you actually get more damage out of the hunt. Yeah, I guess it's 1 better if you guide. And yeah. potentially more than 1 better if you attack individually. Right. Um, it's up to 2. I, I, this leaves up Frostbite, which maybe is kind of important. Um, yeah, I certainly think there's a space here where you could Frostbite the ninja. You don't want that ninja to recover, I don't think before the end of the round. But we do see Inquisitor Med, so this is most likely going to make a Cobra. He has have a knight in hand, right? Like, oh, maybe not. There's no. only three left. Yeah, it's not guaranteed that he's got a knight here. Um, not guaranteed he's got a knight here. He could have a knight here, but it's not a guarantee. Um, does Meditate a Fester away to gain that second, serum, second charm power. Yeah, we're just just looking to activate our books. Put here. second mind fog in play. That's rough. That's and really that's, rough. Yeah, this, this is making, gonna turn making on making two making two more two twos is gonna make this. This is how the end of this game is gonna be very bad for Creep Dog because the milling is gonna happen in two rounds probably, um, and then once. He's out of cards. She's out of cards. Uh, having only two books that make one ones versus just a pile of stuff is going to be very difficult. Yeah, you've got a you've got a small problem but, on your hands overall here. But one of the things that I'm not even sure Inquisitor will make two mind fogs. To be honest, I think it's possible he makes a cobra and a mind fog, and just gets to put a charm power on something like the salamander monk here. So the salamander monk does that's, literally zero. That's, much worse than just like making another mind fog, right? Because you can block Salamander Monk with a mind fog and have a two one in play essentially. Uh, well, it depends on how much he he values getting the mill because he can still make the second mind fog. He's got the charm dice for it. He'd have to meditate right. again, but you can still make Ruby Cobra and second mind fog here. I, I think a hundred percent you should activate all your books. I don't think that's a question. I guess if he has second archer it's better maybe i don't i'm not even sure that's true i guess archer plus cobra is slightly better than mind fog plus cobra but i mean do I, you... I don't i don't like that charm power i i think that that's he didn't spend it it's just for free off the focus on the mind fog oh okay then yeah yeah it's just a it's just a comes into play effect with the focus effect from the mind fog if you spend a charm power on the mind fog, yeah, yeah, then... yeah. Okay, so that's fine then. I, yeah. I would not spend a dice on any of my opponent's units here. Is what I'm saying. So what what Inquisitor did was spent a card to meditate into the mind fog owl this way, but in turn able to now you know power down the sound yeah, for free. Inquisitor doesn't need to worry about meditating at all. He's got 17 cards in his pile. Like he can sure. med no, seven times and be fine. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're on Creep Dog's turn. She's obviously thinking here. I I don't know. I don't know what I would do here. I guess you you really don't have a lot of choice. You can um you can attack you can attack with the raptor, but I mean that seems really bad. I I mean I mean I mean we're, we're going to see this turn play out to where the Aridel traded pretty well resource wise with uh the leo deck but he the leo deck's gonna end up with essentially like the same units in play that were left over from round one how many nature's wraths are in Plus one, two okay so they're in the discard pile so there's no there's no sweeps here yeah i mean it's not even good really it's like slightly better than frostbite i guess because it kills the imperial ninja well, it, it puts one damage on a bunch of units that don't recover, so it allows your 1-1s to fight better in the future rounds. Yeah, I so, guess. I, I, so we are going to see a group tactics attack here. Yeah, would be my guess. Is, I mean, I don't know what else you're doing at this point, so... Yeah, you're going to yeah. get in for one. But I guess if if they block the hatchling with the mind fog, you're trading a mind fog. Again, I, I 
I think you just like take three. I and think then so too. know you're gonna crack back for five. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think that it's better just to take this three three damage here. Um I'm I'm trying to look at it. I guess cards that could be played for the additional dice, uh blood chains, fester, crescendo. That's it. Assuming that we're spending charm on mind fog, charm on Ruby Cobra. Yeah, I mean, blood chains is probably pretty good if you can blood chains out this hammer knight. It takes it out of the game for probably the remainder of this for game. the game. <laughs> yeah. I, alternatively, many, you just keep your your two two in play. The the so, hero ninja has recover one. So Inquisitor it, is valuing life over that mind fog owl. It's a pretty conservative line for Inquisitor. Like, I think... I think you'd be way up here. Yeah, I, it probably doesn't matter, but I agree with you. I think, like, the ability for you to... Just in a, in a straight damage race, you're, t you're doing... There's the Blood Chains. So that does put three exhaustion counters on that Hammer Knight. It is out yeah, of so, play. So Inquisitor just, he he wants to make this game take as long as possible. And he wants to win by fatigue damage only. Like, <laughs> that's the only th uh, thing I could think of that he wouldn't just like, because he could have had, well, he, he, had can, taken, he can still he had play. taken four more damage. Uh, if he had taken four more damage this turn, he could have attacked face right now for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Well, there's only two mind fogs, so one of them had to die. Because otherwise you'd okay, have that, that's that's true. You have to trade one away to make the third one. So right. I guess that it couldn't have been the full squad. Right. Mike, if I had to make a guess on Inquisitor's play line here, I bet you he doesn't attack face. Well, obviously now that's what you do. Like I don't think he's going to though. I'm I'm saying that you are correct. That obviously now you attack units. You don't go face. Right. Like there's he's gonna get a guard here. I I assume the guard here is better than the guard later because you're guarding one instead of two. Right. Uh. And this mind fog could still just go to face because that that hammer is essentially dead, or you can kill the other herder. I don't think it makes a lot of difference. Um, well, it, you attack the herder, and then you make your opponent decide: Are you going to take protect your herder and take two damage? Or oh, you... there wasn't a there wasn't a PB guard there. Okay, right. I see. So yeah, so I I would have guarded that one um, because you would take one. Right, you take one less damage. And now, if he attacks, like I guess. Uh, I mean, if if you're not guarding either of them, if you're just okay with both herders going down, then it's fine. But if you're going to guard one of them, you should guard the cobra and not the owl, right? To save yourself one life. I also think that at this point, if you're Cre creep dog, do you meditate? You should have probably meditated into. I think I would have meditated. Uh, I I think that I would have meditated before I played the second herder two cards into frog ping and uh horse head because then you could play the raptor off the horse head and you'd still have frostbite plus nature ping up now right and that's not irrelevant when you've got a you're facing a ruby cobra mind fog well, out here one one unit would be dead right. with that i don't know if it'll have an outcome, uh, any impact on the end of this game but i think that i think that would have been better yeah, and and I think a lot of this just comes from, um, sort of that round one, uh, you know, yeah, getting behind on board in round one and making that right. What what we're attack. seeing is that last round, all the resources traded pretty equally, because essentially, I guess the hammer knight being dead is a little worse. Yeah, it's it's but, definitely way worse. But what happened was the Leo player went from having Mind Fog, Cobra, Owl to having Mind Fog, Cobra, Owl, Owl. So he only increased his board presence plus one dice. 
-hmm. he did decrease his opponent's board presence uh minus two dice creep dog rolling those basic leafs basic and leafs yeah, only so, power so size in three, rounds we, in three rounds we've seen 14 basics from creep dog which is unfortunate against the mill deck obviously right so we do see um, an owl get chewed up by the first water blast um, but i i'm not saying that the airdale is out of this yet like all, I guess all of the big units are dead. Is that correct? How many? Two Hammer Knights, two Hunt Masters, two Raptors. Okay, so all the units are dead, literally. Um, so there's going to have to be ceremonial powers to make any real threats, right? Besides what's already in play. I'm sure we'll see Inquisitor here just use that Three Eyed Owl right away. With the Water Blast down, you don't have to. Like you can if you want, but there you can kind of do whatever you want now that the water blast is down. Right. That owl is not in danger of dying right now. And if somehow it like I don't even know what you could do to kill it right now, actually. No. I was like trying to think of something, but I can't. I guess it could get sympathy pained if you attack face. Then you wouldn't get to make them discard. But as we saw last round, I don't think that Inquisitor is going to be doing any face attacking. Well, he might He might with the Cobra. Maybe. I don't, I guess, looking at the cards remaining in the pile, I don't really hate the, the blocks with Mindfog as much as I thought I did. Mm -hmm. Because... So we do see me, a Blood Chains... Uh, this is a discard from Owl. Discard from oh. the chains. Um, okay. Because essentially the only things left in this deck are two Molten Golds, a Sympathy Pain, and, and a Frostbite. And one other. I don't know what the last card is. I'll, I will try to figure it out. Well, two Molten Golds takes the Leo to 15, but I don't know how you get that last four unless you're going to start Frostbiting. Well, that, or... that's why I'm saying... Specifically, that's a reason that blocking with those mind fogs is good. Uh, sure. Because you would, if you hadn't and you had made the damage trade, you would be in burn range to death. Yeah, but he could have guarded mind. He could he could have put the mind fog in front of the bigger damage source if that was his concern. No, like you just like he literally did it perfect because what you just said is right. He, even all the burn remaining doesn't kill him. That's perfect to, to block it to allow that to happen and not get aftershock. Um, his, his last card is ice trap, so it's. Molten, Molten, Ice Trap. Her. Her last card is Ice Trap. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh, so we see... Uh, meditates Ice Trap from hand. So we're going to get a, at least a Molten Gold here. Molten, Molten, Frostbite, Sympathy, Pain. And what did I say? Uh, I think that's it. So if you're... If that's the case, and you're you're now on this plan to push the Leo down just through frostbites and sympathy pains, do you you start horse heading here? Like, like I might just to keep the cobras from eating your last cards in deck. You should spend your dice that you have in whatever way you want that to be. Uh, whether it's a uh, ceremonial power, nature power, or Horse head power, but I guess you can't really meditate. So horse head power is the only thing you can do. You have to like, because you can't even make a butterfly. This is really rough. You can like meditate the salamander away, make a butterfly, meditate the butterfly away, make a another uh, nature power to activate frostbite, unless the last card in your hand is frostbite. Yeah, I mean it. It <clears throat> so there's the other owl. You got to play your last card from hand here, or I uh, lose it. What is the last card? Was oh, it choke? I think, or are all the chokes gone. It's a choke. Okay. Molten, molten choke, frostbite. Yeah. Oh, and one of the moments got played, so it's 
I mean, if you're Aerodel at this point, all you can really do is fall back on the Molten Gold and Frostbites. And uh, try to get there on that. And if, if we had seen the, fro the Frostbites come down and not been Sympathy activated, pain. Sympathy Pain's a big one here. Uh, I mean, that's a reason to keep the horse head up. Unfortunately, Sympathy Pain is very bad staring. If that's the card is hand, it's really bad staring down at 3 at See, I think, I think I would have probably meditated my book, my Butterfly Monk away. I don't know. So this is okay, the so second last level. card is Molten. That means that his last card in the pile is Sympathy Pain. Okay. Um, so that's definitely not going to get there. It's kind of interesting because if Frostbite goes to the dome, I'll go to 16. Sympathy Pain, I'll put him at 18. Then Frostbite next round will put him at dead. But that requires Aerodel well, not to take what uh it's gonna take four fatigue and Aerodel is um, out currently out of um uh she's out of room here i mean like can't can't frostbite this round because it requires a nature and she does not have a nature die oh yeah so because the other uh um yeah so then then we're essentially done like if your plan was double molten here that to me, like you could have instead of meditating that last card away, that was the frostbite. You could have, uh, see, and here's the yeah. cobra eats the last card. So, right. um, I, I mean, most likely double Bolton is just a blood points plan. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I just point. think there was, I think there was a point where you could have meditated your butterfly monk book away, and you got a one in three shot of drawing either your sympathy pain, your choke, which is the worst hit for you. So you've got a thirty three percent chance of drawing the frostbite. So if you're if you're chant if you're gonna play the odds, you can play the odds into second frostbite, and second frostbite actually gets you there, right? Because you could go frostbite frostbite now on your basic costs this round, and well, okay, so you don't know that for sure because frostbite was one of the cards that was meditated to play the second molten gold, right? But my so point like, is, is like you could have meditated the butterfly monk book away so top a deck to get there because they only meditated one card, right? Play. But you you can't assume the like when you're sitting at a table, you don't know what the order of the cards is. Well, sure. And, I like, said we're just talking about the hypothetical, then like, I said you take a one and three shot at it. I mean you're you're, you're right. I mean I, I think that you should use the sympathy pain or the, the horse head just because. But uh she did meditate molten both times, right? Like there wasn't really a side action window in there. I don't know what the first action of the round was. I guess the first action of the round was Water Blast with side action on Owl. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, I get it. And yeah, it's, so, it's certainly challenging. So there, hasn't, there hasn't been a side action window yet uh, that would allow for Horsehead, given the order of things. Um, I suppose instead of Molten Gold last turn, you could have, like, Horsehead attack for one with something. So at but this you point, you can't pass because the Leo's definitely. If you pass, the Leo's just gonna pass. Like at this point, do you me. meditate? Do you meditate away? Um. Do you meditate away your your uh, your book to be able to recur a Raptor? A hundred percent. If you're still trying to win, like you should make you should try to play two Raptor herders this turn. Yeah. Yeah, I think you just meditate both the Butterfly Monk and the Frostbite away and see if you can get in. Here, but it's, I mean, that's, it's not a, Wait, an ideal scenario. I mean, you should leave the frostbite and meditate just the other two things salamander and butterfly. Just because, like, frostbite, like, <laughs> you want as much damage to the face as you can get, and butterfly and salamander don't do that really. Right. So, if, if you're still trying to win, I, I mean, the, the only plays left to her are meditate butterfly, meditate salamander into the ceremonial powers make a raptor make a raptor interestingly enough uh inquisitors only got room for one more unit on the battlefield so cobra doesn't look particularly good uh any longer mind fog owl is kind of your only real threat and you know it's probably not going to die and you probably can't attack if you're the leo here 
because you just risk like a counterattack like right now as it sits. I mean, I talking about like the herder herder thing, like I guess I guess if the Leo just makes a unit, like makes a two two, shrinks one of the one ones. Because you you'd make a make a two two up outlook and use the free charm power on one of these one ones. I don't think that the the Aradel can actually get wider than them, right? Because she has eight, and I guess she can only make four more units right now. Period. So she'll go to seven units, and we're gonna see essentially as many charm powers as necessary to just like blank the board so we're gonna go okay we're gonna grab um we're gonna grab raptor go to eight life on the airedale so there will be eight life remaining you're gonna go down to seven life remaining you're gonna take five and go to two life remaining inquisitor really only needs to get in for two here so just making another mind fog owl and attacking with your board the mind fogs can't be blocked you get in for four win the game just well, you die team. then right if you do that because uh, then you don't have blockers and you take four you can't like the it's true, it's true, yeah. Like he can't attack, but yeah. he probably is like first let's look and see if there's a sympathy pain. There are no sympathy pains in the Leo deck. Um I don't know. This is actually interesting. If this might not be as impossible as I thought it was, because if we play Raptor, we get a two-two. One of the one ones gets blanked. Right. We play Raptor. So that's essentially six units to four units. Yeah, it's very possible you get, get in. Oh, that that only gets through for two damage though. Put him at seventeen. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you'll die. But the mind fogs uh, would be dead at that point, right? You guess you get to make no. another mind fog. The my, I mean, if anything, the mind fogs dying is what the Leo wants because you get an additional one and because it opens up space. I guess the. Yeah, I I don't think you can get there be, because of charm power specifically. Because these two twos are way better than the Cobra now. Right. Yeah, it's... I mean, does Inquisitor just pass here? Like, I would pass. Creep Dog pass. So if Inquisitor passes, you just go into round four. You're in a pretty good driver space. Like pass here is just deal five to your opponent. I'm like, I'm trying to think of something that would be like good for him to play. Like I guess if he plays Blood Archer, that's like powerful enough that Well Blood Archer would just passing. probably let him close the game out, right? Because he can yeah. just he can create all kinds of bypass and get in for, for real damage. Just on the back of the killing these salamander monks. No. Because the the Airedale player still has the play of get back Raptor, play Raptor. Like, there won't be bypass. There'll be sure. way more units on the Airedale side. But if you just, like, like play Blood Archer, Pain yeah. Herder... Inquisitor goes ahead and passes. And makes yeah, pass. I, think this is, I think this is fine. Uh, you just put Airedale at 12. The Airedale has a Frostbite and a Butterfly to play with. And the... Um, the Hammer Knight is out of the game until next turn, which should be lethal because uh, another 550 will kill the Airedale before the Hammer Knight would ever come into play. Right. Just, just this, couldn't this quite game get was there. like was really close, and I would be very interested to see what would have happened if we had had the like nature ping in round one. On uh, I I really like think Wolfinch. I really think that it would have opened up. The air double well, probably an immense amount. The life totals would have been very different because the air doll was attacking face the whole game. And uh if you make that play with the nature spin, you're not attacking face almost at all. But I think you end up far enough on board that you'll get to make one big attack for like nine or something. On the top of a round. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm not sure. To be to be fair, like the Airedale player was in, ended up on a three book plan, while the Leo player ended up in a four book setup. That double mind fog makes a four book configuration for the Leo. Four books powerful. Well, I mean, 
it's kind of like a two book right now because Cobra, I mean, the game is over. So like, it's not really anything, Right. but last turn, this was a two book because you have two books that make zero twos that do nothing right. and two books that make two twos. Um, although although the, the second three at Al didn't do actually zero, it forced the Airedale player to use that last card from hand. Um, but not that that really matters, probably. That Molten Gold is getting played regardless of whether this Owl came into play. <laughs> oh, here's an Anguish. Oh. That kills them, right? Don't put them at 16? Well, they can exhaust two dice. Oh, okay. To survive, but... I mean, it's well, you should you should exhaust two dice and frostbite your opponent for a blood point. <laughs> <laughs> like that's a, that would be the the one hundred percent play, but right. also probably not necessary. I, I don't know what bracket these guys are in, uh, so the blood points probably don't matter very much. Unless is this like the four one bracket? No, no. Inquisitor, yeah. I think, is two three this season. Us. Takes away the Raptor play, puts two damage on the Aerodel. Yeah, you're 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 basically at this point if you're the Aerodel, you're conceding by just frostbiting here. Right. I mean I mean if you want to get really cheeky, you can frostbite and like shoot the your mind fog owl and force the, it. The only way you actually survive the next attack is by making Salamander and um activating Water blast, right? Because now that thing you've been talking about the whole game is actually true, where the mind fog is unblockable, <laughs> right? And that does allow the monk spirits to get into play, but they're not going to be able to pressure the Leo down with the Glowfinch in play. Well, you about you die. Damage. Like he'll if he doesn't if he doesn't make a unit and water blast, he's dead to a shot by five guys. She. Okay, I can't. I'm never going to get that right. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the same way with uh with uh. Kyla's name, like I only get it right half the time. Sure. And then, like the first time I commented on Inquisitor, I was calling him Justin the whole time instead of Jason. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So don't take it personally. I'm just an idiot. <laughs> just I, I, like... I'm just, I'm just trying to correct you. Eventually, it'll burn into your I brain. Know. I hope I will get there eventually. I need to like meet these. I, I need to meet you in real life, and like listen, like. Any, any, like Jason or Kyla or, uh, I, what is Creep Dog's name? Charlotte? I think it's Charlotte. Like, on Discord, yeah. Yeah. Like, I need to, like, meet you in person and, like, put a face with a name and, like, actually, uh, talk about it because honestly, half the time, like, every, like, every single person in this is, like, just generic faceless robot because I've never met you. You know, mm -hmm. I know your, your Discord name because I can read it, but that's it. And that's that's too bad because like every time I've interacted with everyone in this community via chat in Ashteki or on uh, on Twitch or whatever, you're all great. Like everybody is so awesome in this community, and uh, it's too bad that we we have not been able to get together some kind of real life tournament like Gen Con or something yet. That was a cool game, and. Uh, with the exception of that, I, I know we were we were maybe critical of the Airedale player a couple of times that match. I think the only one that was like glaring was the one the nature pink from round yeah. one that we talked about. Yeah, and that yeah. like potentially like that one play uh it had shows this... how close this game would have been. And I d I wasn't sure that that the the Airedale deck really had the legs to compete because it kind of fights on a different axis, but it definitely did. Like yeah, it just I sort of it's, it sort level. of forces a spiral, right? An outward spiral, downward spiral through the rounds when your opponent can keep units on board like that. And particularly how much those that one I mean the one mind fog owl or three eyed owl on the left of Inquisitor's board is um, that's from round one. That's the round one owl. So like that owl just got four cards. And that's not insignificant at all. And uh you know, I think that this is a real opportunity for for Creep Dog to to value uh, unit control in a in an Aerodel type uh, matchup. Like, because I think she had the reach. She had the reach through Frostbites and through the, Molten Golds. Yeah, the, I am surprised by every time I watch this deck, 
I'm very surprised by how good it is. And I, I don't mean that to be insulting or anything. It's just like not a version of Airedale that I would have ever built mm -hmm. because it's, you know, all the Airedales I've ever played are like four books. Sure. But this is like, like, like a Herald deck or like a James deck or something. We just like smash with the allies. Right. And, and I think, uh, I think Airedale can definitely play on that axis. I, I do wonder, and I'd love to get Charlotte's thoughts on it at some point, and maybe she can add comments into the Discord later. But I would just be curious about, like, do you play book copies two and three of Butterfly Monk or book copies two and three of Salamander Monk so you can continue to pressure those units up? Since they're, I mean, Butterfly Monk's kind of expensive in Ariel when you don't have dice fixers, but she does have Magic Siphon, right, and didn't start it. So it's it's possible that maybe just, like, plan of Magic Siphon, Butterfly Monk, and... Um, Salamander Monk is better than the really aggressive Huntmaster uh, Hammer Knight open. You know, she doesn't have like I like that open against the Leo specifically. I yeah, I mean, but she like doesn't. We were have... talking about like the the one nature ping would have made that like I think really one sided for the Aridel that round one. See, I think I would have probably started a sympathy pain knowing that my opponent's on a bunch of O2s and two life units and be able to sympathy pain. Like, it's just a removal spell in my, in my deck at that point over burn. Because we've seen, like, I've personally played Frostbites and Molten Golds in my Odette list that were a way for Odette to sort of stall the board out like we saw here and then just push into final damage points off of Molten Golds and Frostbites and just like one, like you said, one big attack somewhere in the four rounds that you're going to play when you have a top around because you've been controlling the board. So it doesn't take much, right, to do that, especially yeah, when... I think the first five was really good. Okay. I really do. Uh, yeah. I The way that it played out, like she was very close to just breaking it open. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I have... Maja Paul on Discord over here, ready to play our match whenever. Okay. And um, I've got, I've got, um, I'm going to, like, if you can mute your Zoom, um, I'm, I'm going to jump over into um, Discord and uh, uh, let yeah, me I'm going to, I'm going to close, gonna... I'm going to close the stream down and, uh, sounds good. Like, what's, is Major Apollo on Symbali? Um, I haven't actually looked. That's how busy this week has been. Yeah, Symbali. Okay. I thought so. Let me, Get the uh, get the overlays set up. Major Apollo in the house. What's up, Major? I'm rooting for you, dude. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, I'm I'm gonna. No, I, I actually too, technically then. need you to win for my entire my like <laughs> my uh, strength of schedule, but I I I just Neil was like I'm gonna crush you, so therefore I now root for anybody that's playing against Neil this season. <laughs> All right, um, so we got yeah, 19. I'm gonna mute my. I'm gonna take my headphones off. I'm gonna mute my uh, my Zoom here and Symboli 19 um, as well, Paulo. I think Symboli 19. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Auric, auric, auric. I don't know. I didn't even look at this. I should have paid more attention before. Uh, Sign up for this. All right, I'm gonna get off. I All right, sounds good. When we're done. Good luck, man. Good luck, Major. Appreciate it, dude. Thanks for being on stream for us tonight. All right. All right. So I think I have the game reset here. So I'm gonna leave this game. We're gonna go watch Neo. Let me get in with Leonard here. Um, Um, there we go. Leonard, are Hello. you there? Hey, what's going on, man? Not much. Thanks for joining me on stream. A half of a, uh, a takeover tonight. Um, we're getting ready to fire up an Auric versus Symbali matchup. We got Neil on the bottom of the screen. I don't know if you're into the game yet or not uh, on Ash Techie, but they are setting just it up. loading up Ash Techie here. Awesome. Uh, how's my audio, by the way? Is it, These is sound it good? great to me. Uh, Chat, you let me know if you're if I need to boost him or not, but it sounds good from my end coming through my headphones right now. 
So, Leonard, while you're uh, joining, why don't you go ahead and plug your channel? I know you do some streaming for Shuffle Bus matches and other content for Ashes, and I think you do some other stuff too, right? So, um, you know, go ahead and give your channel a little bit of a plug where people can follow you, kind of what your streaming schedule's like, stuff like that. Uh, streaming schedule? What are you talking about? <laughs> man, that's all I know. That's, that's, the, that's all I do is stream schedules, man. We need to talk about your content strategy then. How's that? <laughs> <We> can... <laughs> oh, boy. My strategy is whenever the fine folks at Shuffle Bus put out a tournament, I play and, uh, and then we see what happens. Love it. Love that's, it. That's pretty much it. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, so I, I stream on twitch.tv slash, I guess, Leonard the Third with underscores between all the words there. Okay. Uh, but what I did want to say is, you know, for all those people watching right now, if you have Amazon Prime, you should link that to your Twitch account and use it to subscribe to the Shuffle Bus oh for my free. Gosh. Oh, there's too much love here. I can't take that love. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, so my, he says your mic's a little hotter than mine, so let me see if I can run you down just a bit here. Let's try that and see. My Ash Techie is giving me issues right now, so that's why I haven't got in okay. here yet. Thanks, Inquisitor, for being on stream so much and uh, bringing all your opponents on. I appreciate that. So Neil has gotten started here. He was the first player to go here rolling four basics, although Orc doesn't ever care about basics. We know that uh, as Orc players. Um, he he got, does meditate a crescendo way to bring up uh, the one uh, dice, uh, nature die. We do see uh, Major Apollo meditating three times here to go uh, polarity, mage, rose fire, dancer, body inversion out to get a power sight on illusion charm and divine um and then plays a Lightbringer book to neil salamander monk uh so we're gonna have peacock and monk battles here i'm sure we'll see neil do the standard meditate he's still digging for that concentration here it's a pretty standard line from from neil i would guess that he'll make the salamander but he may go ahead and put down a bear i don't know apollo's list so i i'm i'm playing and commentating this blind Normally, Neil handles the lists while I handle user interfaces. So it does bring the small sack in from Neil right away here. Um, so Apollo has Sarasaurus Mount, Lightbringer, and Winged Lioness for okay. books in this list. Honestly, so, kind of a wild Simbali running five colors. That is I think that's that pretty we, cool. I think we covered the Simbali list in Ashcon, our Ashcon coverage. Uh, and I, it was a super cool... Uh, Symboli list that had a lot of surprises in store. So we do see the Sarasaurus come down here as a second book. I'm sure that um, with the double frog standing up on the Oryx side here, um, you know, we're not going to get a, we're not going to see a big thing. But Neil did grab a Fester on his insight. So he is set up for the frog ping Fester play here. My guess is he's going to spend some concentrate dice after the opponent brings in a unit. To, uh, to get that fester turned on, because right now he does not have the ceremonial power side showing. So he just makes a Salamander Monk. i am be interesting to see whether or not the Symbali wants to answer that with a Lightbringer. I'm guessing not. But the Auric deck from Neil doesn't... It does have threats, it does have knights, and it's possible that Neil could have started a Master Vampire or a Hammer Knight. Uh, but I'm not saying that's always an open that Neil takes. So... Lightbringer may be a little less impactful here uh, if Neil does not open with the bigs. But we do see an open from mm. the Symbali with a Celestial Knight. This is a, this is a nice, solid answer to the small sacrifice. Until Neil gets that second small sacrifice online, it can exhaust that knight and just keep it out of play. It, it does create a real problem for the Auric here. Because there's just yeah, not so a good way to fight it. What ways does... Uh, Neil really have to deal with this Celestial Knight here. I guess if he can get one damage on it, obviously Fester's going to work. Yeah, if, I think but... the one damage on it is potentially possible. If he started an Ancestor or gets into the Ancestor, that's one way to get the damage on for the Fester to kill this Knight. The other thing is if he can get Focus, set Small Sacrifice up, he can exhaust the Knight. And so then it just doesn't become a threat for him. He can just keep it sort of on lockdown, just using... Chewing up salamander monks, exhaust the salamander monks into this or, you know, any number of different 
things. Like one of his plays that he likes to do that I've seen him do is exhaust a butterfly monk. And then later, if he needs the ping on the second small sacrifice book, go ahead and actually damage the butterfly monk that he exhausted to still deal a point of damage. Some really cheeky plays come out of the, the double focus small sacrifice or the single focus small sacrifice, excuse me. So yeah, it'd be interesting to see how soon he can get that up here. Uh, obviously drawn one from concentrate. Mm -hmm. and meditated through two cards, one being the Fester that he got back. And then, as you said, the Ancestor Spirit could be looking at even another one. One, one thing that's kind of interesting when you start talking about Celestial Knight is because it doesn't have the traditional knight ability, it just has the armored ability. Uh, and, and I'm saying just, like it's like some sort of <laughs> uh, problem. Uh, Neil making the sympathy side action to draw another card, digging deeper into the deck. But because of that, you, you really can just make Butterfly Monk into it all day, right? And just block it, and it's not really a Ooh, threat. Ooh, look and at he that. Does, he does get second small sacrifice online in round one. Uh, That's this, nice. This is exactly what you want to see happen. Uh, you have to be careful on the gifts because you can exhaust this knight, and the gifts can just remove all the exhaustion. So... Uh, Simbali yep. plays a, a different game like that. So Neil doesn't block, just takes the three damage here. That's that's curious to me. I would have thought, because obviously when you block with the monk here, you get the spirit. You must have another which plan you, for this monk. Yeah, I, I do kind of like, you want to have something up to kind of throw whenever Lightbringer comes out as, as your attacker. Mm -hmm. um, so we do see Butterfly monk, monk here. Now. Interestingly enough, I think Neil plays some in flames, so it is possible that he could make one of these monks. If Neil put him on Celestial Knight's start, he could have he could inflame one of these and attack into the knight just to st stand one point of damage for the fester. Um, because the gift of wings doesn't um, doesn't uh, you know heal; it just removes the exhaustion. Yeah. So he's got, let's see, three dice to spend on the books, plus two for Simbali is five, which leaves him with a uh, match with another two dice here for two cards in hand. So that could be something like, presumably, an ally at least for the Ceresaurus, obviously. I would, you have to think that nature die is being held for that ra a raptor. Does he have raptors? Major Apollo? Uh, he actually doesn't have any raptor herders. Looks okay. like most likely... We oh, it's Anchornaut. Well, there okay. we see it right there. Anchornaut. Yep, yeah. yeah, so we're going to see Anchornaut into Sarasaurus here. My guess is that this is going to be just a, a fester on this Sarasaurus immediately. Um, but giving your opponent back Anchornaut... Oh, he has an ice trap. Oh, Neil starts an ice trap on the Sarasaurus here. That's a good start. That's pretty spicy against mounts, for sure. I do like that start for Neil here. Uh, good way to turn the Sarasaurus off, uh, unless the Symbali player was actually on a plan to uh, to do that. But charging the Divine into the Celestial sort of says, oh yeah, I'm definitely going to gift this. So uh, does Apollo have Shepherd? That's a good question, Inquisitor. Do not he has three Shepherds in the list. So that would be another interesting start here. Another good, um, obviously, target for the Sarasaurus mount. Yeah, the only thing you'd have to be careful of here was with the small sack up. If you start Shepard, you definitely are giving your opponent time. And Neil starts the Ancestor Spirit. So, or Drew into it. I don't know for sure. But this Ancestor is looking really good into that Celestial Knight here. Uh, just, just as a, I mean, Symbali has to be force guarded. Um, you know, you, you've got a few opportunities here. And I think Neil will be happy to trade, like, if you gifts and then attack, like, the Salamander Monk is going to be happy to just stand in front of that knight and not take another another set of damages here. I think Apollo's best play is to get Lightbringer here, isn't it? He gets Lightbringer, then you, the you have to, Monk has to swing, and then next turn you can Gift of Wings for four. So we do see Apollo meditate away a Winged Lioness for a Nature Power. So maybe he's still holding, thinking that last card from Neil is a Master Vampire. Because Neil is holding the dice for Master Vampire still here. The Ancestor Spirit would then not be part of the first five plan if that was true. It could have been drawn into off of the Concentrate. So there is the, uh, the Lightbringer play you mentioned. 
I think Neil probably wants to just trade Monk with Lightbringer here, I would guess. I, I think that's a, a, a good call, Leonard. I think um, your opponent has to decide, do they want to counter and give you the spirit? You know, I'm, I'm not sure what the correct call is there. Sort of depends on what that last card in hand is. I think you're probably better to counter because if you... Okay, so he chose not to counter. Chose not to counter. But the thing is, Neil has a small sack, which he can use to kind of refresh that monk anyways. Right. Because if, if you are... Like, if you are on Shepard here, maybe to recur back the anchor knot, and I, I don't know if that's what he's on. It's very difficult. Apollo's passing, so does I not guess... want to commit into this board. He can't be on Shepard anymore because he doesn't have enough to divine for the Sarasaurus, right? Because he spent he spent that extra divine to pump up the Celestial Knight, right? So so Neil is foregoing. If he was on Knight, he has foregone foregone that for the Ancestor Spirit. Going to cycle his deck here. He he could very easily find Concentrate off this cycle. Find another Butterfly Monk off this cycle. I mean, there's 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 a bunch of hits he can have here. That are that are particularly good for just establishing the board against the Sembali here. So we do see the one damage from the ancestor, but Neil did find the concentrate, or he definitely found the concentrate. So that's uh that's pretty spicy here. That's pretty huge. It's, yeah, as a or, as an Auric player, dr getting that second concentrate in the first round is pretty awesome. I mean, especially. Auric when he's in a dice advantage like this. Yep. I mean, so now it is theoretically possible that Neil has drawn a Hammer Knight. It would be a very low probability, but that would be sort of the ceiling here. But he drew a Molten Gold. A mol and Molten Gold looks really good if your opponent's not on Golden Veil. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Looking really good if your opponent's not on GB. <laughs> um, holy that smokes. That is wild. Okay. So well, that's round one for you. <laughs> that was an awesome Golden Veil, that I was, have to say. That was pretty wild, for sure. I still think uh, Neil's in a good position here. Focus Small Sacrifice, Focus Concentration going into this round is a really good position. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I think any time that you can come out of round one with all five of your books and two of them that you want focused, focused, you you're definitely on par for Oric to to do Oric things in the late rounds, um, and and whether or not that'll be enough to get around this uh, Celestial Knight is hard to say. Did Neil play the Fester? Oh, he must have bottomed the Fester off of Ancestor Spirit, gave up on it, and just bottomed it. Yeah, I wonder if he drew into. Maybe the Molten and decided that was a more, you know. Yeah, well, the Concentrate drew the Molten for sure because um, um, he, he, his last card played from hand was Concentrate and then Concentrate into a card draw and then played, Royal, uh, played Molten off of that. Right, so, good point. All right, so we've got uh, some Meditation coming from Apollo here kicking off the top of round two. So that was a royal charm. There is only one of those in the deck. So both a royal charm and a winged lioness. Ready spell gone. Yeah. I with Neil's unit size, I'm not sure that I mean Lioness looks kinda kinda sad. We do see a purify go by. That's that's probably big, a big hit for the Sembali against Neil's mostly conjuration board. So we're gonna just see this Lightbringer, Salamander Monk again. Good way to get three damage off the Celestial Knight. Potentially four, because you do have the Divine Die up if you wanted to pump the Knight. So Neil's going to side axe and concentrate, which is... I, I, like, I like that you get that opportunity in Auric before you make the attack. It yeah, just gives you, you another card to look it. at. Yeah, it just gives you another card to look at and, and make sure you make the right attack decision uh, based on what you're going to draw off of. No counter again. Yeah. So that 
Monk is still so, alive. Definitely going to see the Celestial Knight just punch, punch in for four here. Uh, this knight is doing a ton of work on Neil here. I would guess that Neil has a pretty good opportunity just to make a butterfly monk here and sort of stabilize the board, although Sarasaurus really does put a put a pretty big hitch in that giddy up with uh, Butterfly Monk. I lost to a Sarasaurus this season because even though I was blocking it with monks, it's it's a net zero change. It just keeps you from healing, which allows everything else to pressure you. I think it'd also be nice to um, get the Ancestor Spirit as well, just because, you know, more cycling, more looking through your options. Keep right. digging for the Concentrate. Neil is really looking for this last Concentrate now, so unless it's buried, a uh, very high probable chance that he'll see it this round, which is what this deck is designed to do. He doesn't actually want, uh, and he's told me a few times, he doesn't actually want to try to like spend third dice into it in round two so much as just get it online so that he can spend third dice into it round three for Awaken. Yeah, he because as long as he gets it by next round at some point, then he can Awaken, mm -hmm. right? He only needs the three more tokens. Right. So... So I'm, I'm sure point. he'll be happy to awaken early in round three in this matchup in particular. Just just to get those tokens moving. A pass already from Apollo. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's a good pass, right? Like, you sort of are, like, the thing about this for Neil is if he doesn't have the concentrate here, then he... Uh, you know, he, he has to continue to play, right? So, um... I, I don't know. I feel like right now... Uh, okay, so Neil went ahead and passed. I feel like it's definitely to the Oryx player's advantage to be passing here, because that unexhausts their concentrations. Right. I, think I feel like this maybe says that um, Magipolo has a bad hand, because otherwise he has a fair number of, of one-die allies, like Anchor Knots, Shepherd of Lost Souls, you would maybe want to try and get those down so you could get a, a Sarasaurus mount and at least force out the small sacrifice or right. something like that. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that makes sense. I, I mean, I don't, th I don't think there's ever a good time to pass against Orc, especially when he's on plan. But, yes. you know, we, didn't, we haven't seen, or at least didn't see Apollo discard any cards. So I guess he was happy with, like, I'll just trade four damage into you every turn. But that feels pretty rough here. I mean, because now Neil can put a third unit on the board, and he does exhaust that, so that's going to force the Gift of Wings here just to get in for even a little bit of damage, and that's not even going to be possible with the Butterfly Monk in the way. So you're going to have to make a Lightbringer, force the Butterfly Monk to attack, and then... I guess you can gift an attack there, for, but you're not going to get in for four. You're going to get in for three. Yeah, that's not... You need to be getting in for more than that. I think so. Win this race. Yeah, I think so. Otherwise, this, this orc's going to awaken, and it's going to close the gap really fast. And put a lot of pressure on everything else you're trying to do as a, as a Symboli player. Sarasaurs and... and Everything else. So we see the anchor not come back down. And I would expect an immediate probably Sarasaurus onto this anchor knot. Um, just because the frogs are up. So if you don't get it right away, um, that ally's probably not sticking around. Right. Absolutely. Especially just because Neil's holding the small sack too. So he can make the, the monk small sack if he really wanted to. Um, you know, to, to kill the anchor knot even that way. You definitely don't want to ex leave this anchor not exposed if Neil is needing those double frogs for something outside of making more butterfly monks here. Yeah, I'd be curious to see to know what's in his hand. He's got a frost fang in the deck, two hammer knights, and the master vampire. Any of those would be probably pretty nice draws right about now to kind of start putting the pressure. Well, hammer knight looks really good into this board, right? Because your opponent can't kill it, uh, not without. A lot of work and effort uh, and essentially like if you make Sarasaurus here 
and attack into the Hammer Knight, you're actually going to spend, what's it going to be, like five dice or something? Neil just has a second ice trap, taking that Anchor Knight out, pulling away the Sarasaurus. Oh, again. wow. <laughs> just, just, uh, and healing one. I mean, that's, that's where the Butterfly Monk wants to live, right? However, this still puts Neil in a place where he's going to get open to the gifts hit. But I think if you're Neil, you force that now. You play the Ancestors. Well, I think he, he could just summon a Butterfly Monk now, right? Because we yes. didn't see a Lightbringer last turn, so he could, could get the defenses up here. Yep. I think a lot of that's going to depend on... Yeah, he does summon that Butterfly. So, so no other nature card he's planning here. Or one away. Doesn't have... Like a sympathy die, actually. That's interesting. Yeah, I think he's digging. I think he's going to look at three more cards here with these sympathy dice. Um, potentially, maybe only one. He he could make a Salamander Monk and Ancestor Spirit here because the Ancestor Spirit would let him dig one more card. All right, so we're seeing that Lightbringer play again. Definitely putting in the work here with this Celestial Knight. For sure. This Knight has just... Uh, just stuck. So Neil's going to attack the monk. I wonder if it's better. And, and Symbolic Guard's there. Okay. So decides to protect the Lightbringer. Is he maybe going to try and swing with it for one extra? Possibly, because you can, you can uh, gift the knight and get in for four still. Maybe he's worried about a Hammer Knight dropping on the opposite side, and he wants... So Neil I blocker for that. Neil does get a crescendo. Yeah, I mean, this guard has got to be good for Neil if he's sitting on knights, right? Like, very good chance that his knights are in that 10-card hand right now. That really does let the Master Vampire or the Hammer Knight um, do a lot of work for you. I think Symboli's going to have to play a around here. You definitely don't want to pass back and let the concentrations come online. No. So Match does have a couple Sonic Swordsmen in his deck. It would be interesting to see one of those dropped now. Yeah, I think it would be a really good threat if he's got it. And he's definitely holding the dice. Eye. Yep. So we see Salamander Monk get played here. Surprisingly, I thought Neil might go, but I guess maybe he's trying to bait that, you know, that nature die to get spent before he makes Ancestor Spirit. This Salamander is, is um, pretty good at exhausting a Sarasaur if your opponent tries to make it. Because you've got the second small sack to exhaust your salamander. Yep. In a way, I almost wonder if getting the Ancestor Spirit and having it die to the nature die is good. Because then you guarantee that you don't have to worry about a Sarasaurus. Right. It's, so it's been one... Around it. It's essentially, you're, you're going, if, I, if I'm digging for Concentrate, you can play the Ancestor Spirit. As you're well aware, you're, you're playing Ancestor Spirit in Oric as well. You get to see another card. You force your opponent to exhaust the die to answer the 2 1 threat, and you still got value, right, compared to them who just got yeah. a unit removal. So I think there is a, a place here for this Ancestor Spirit to come into play. We do know for sure that Neil's got a crescendo because he incited a crescendo back from Oryx. So it's possible that Neil, we're going to see a purify here. Um, is he going to bounce the Celestial back? Yeah, he's going to bounce the Celestial back and kill the Spirit. Uh, that, that feels rough on a Celestial. It does. I, I, I'm not sure I'm a big fan of that, but maybe that's just based on his hand. Um, I, I think that guarantees that there's no Sonic in his hand, right? There's no way you would make that play if you have another Knight that you can actually play. Right. I agree with that for sure. The issue at hand is, yeah, so now you're definitely, Neil is making that Ancestor Spirit play, saying, all right, go ahead. You know, 
ping my ping my spirit. Don't make your Sarasaur. My monk spirit gets to live. And I get to threaten your armored unit because there's got to be a Fester now at this point for Neil. We know there is at least a Fester seven cards away at this point. Possibly six. I don't remember if we saw three Ancestors up to this point. Uh, that's a good question. I think we did. So Meteor comes down. Um, this is, I guess this is okay. Well, you're definitely going to get to make a Celestial into this, right? And you can gift your Celestial for double, double three attack. All of Neil's books are tapped out, so you know there's nothing else coming from there. Oh, nice second Salamander Monk yeah. book. See, that's the big risk that's you have strong. here. This is the big risk you really take with, um, playing Orc that way, because Orc plays a bunch of extra books. Because you just need free card play sometimes. So there is the Celestial here. And a Salamander Monk. So I'm expecting we're just going to frog ping this and then swing for three. Yeah. And then you're not going to be able to gift here. Unless maybe it's better to swing. <laughs> is it better to use the gift? It doesn't. It makes no sense. Better yeah, to, to save this empty die. You know, it's interesting because it, it's going to net you three either way. So I think it's kind of six of one, half a dozen of the other. Yeah, if you save it, I guess you can use it for the uh, the power and, and maybe look at some cards in your deck. Throw mm -hmm. something to the bottom if you don't need it. So Neil is going to miss Awaken here in round three, it looks like. Because he's out of insight and out of card draw. I would have thought he would have gone ahead and concentrated if he had it. Yeah, that's um, unfortunate. But I think he's got a lock on this game anyway. I think he's okay. As some Bally, not getting be able to use Gift of Wings, I guess that's two rounds in a row. That is uh, not what you want to be doing. Right. So at this point, I definitely think you're just, you know you're going to take another three damage, right? If you're Neil here, you go, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to suffer three damage. Yeah. Um, from the oh, gift. So interesting. He did actually do it that way, where he, he just swung twice. What's interesting is Neil can actually double exhaust this knight now, right? Or is, no, it can't because it has to be an unexhausted target. Yeah, small sacrifice is both unexhausted. Yep, so there's the second damage into Symbali here. And the Auric player has got 11 remaining. But we are going to see an awakened auric here. We go into round four. And two butterfly mud books is going to be just a lot of healing to try and dig through. Yeah, it. The, this Lightbringer has proven very valuable in terms of just opening the board up because Neil doesn't have like multiple unit plays. Um, so Neil discards four cards. What did he discard? He discarded uh, Inflame, Nature's, Ra Nature's Wrath, and a Root Armor. All seem pretty dead in this matchup. Although I do like the Inflame Force the Celestial Knight to block and guard you. Like, yeah, that's kind of nice on maybe like an Ancestor. Well, not, you don't even need an Ancestor Spirit to do that at that point. You could just throw it on a Monk Spirit and you'd still so get, gonna get in for a get in for four here. Putting that pressure on Orc real fast. Orc down now to seven life remaining. So Magipalo does have two heals in his deck, um, but nothing in the way of burn really. So he, if he wants to close this out, he's going to need to just keep swing with the Celestial Knight. There is the awakened state now. So Neil is just conceding four more points of damage here. I think maybe he. Side action that. I think you're going to take the four more anyways. Oh, this is Ooh. this is uh, very saucy here. So that's good because it you're safe from the Lightbringer play because if they get a Lightbringer, obviously you can just swing with the Monk Spirit and you still have your 
lovely vampire. Yeah, do you think the do you think you give up on the Sarasaurus here and you go Lightbringer, Nature Ping, the Monk Spirit? You know what? I think that is probably your best bet, right? And then you get another four. It sure seems like it. But you're going to get in only for three because the Master's going to heal one. Now, if Neil has a Neil has second copy of Inflame, so if he's got second copy of Inflame in his hand of five here, he can actually that, hunt the that's knight. That's nasty with the vampire for right. sure. Cactus votes ping with Lightbringer, but definitely this vampire could potentially with second copy of Inflame go in and um, kill the knight, and then you still got uh, you know you take one from a Lightbringer that way, but then you've got Awaken State for the rest of this this game to close the gap down. I'm not saying that's what Neil has. I don't know. Hard to give up your 3-3 threat, though. Yeah. But Neil's now at a point where concentrates don't need to... Di like, he doesn't need third copy of concentrate any longer, so... The dice He's he really has... just using them to, to fix dice if he needs it. Right. At this point. It's spending one die to tr change one. And I don't, I think with Oryx Insight available, you can just do that as a meditate. So he can get that last power site on that ceremonial for, for free on it, on a free insight draw. Race for damage with no burn, guard with some belly, and just keep. So playing. there's, yeah, so this, this is actually, this is a good play because. It eats the vampire. So we see a gift of wings to eat the vampire on the Celestial Knight because the Celestial Knight was buffed with the Divine Die. Um, I don't know if there's any other untaps for the Simbali player now, but... Simbali is running one Flute Mage. So, so that could be pretty interesting. So Neil does meditate here. Oh, he used Concentration. He wants another status token. I wonder why. why Maybe he's you... digging for a Fester? He it's, hasn't seen it yet. It's possible. I mean, he's got two Festers, so I would have thought by now he would have seen the second copy of Fester, but it's possible it's in the bottom three cards here. We know there's one in there um, somewhere because <laughs> uh, he, he bottomed one in after an insight in round one. So what is Madge Apollo's game plan here? He still has three shepherds that we haven't seen any of. So it's probably pretty likely that he's got at least one of those in hand, which means he could get, be getting back uh, Anchor Knot, Sonic, Rose Fire, all of which are interesting options here. The Rose Fire is probably a little risky due to the frog, but if he wants to try and gun for a Sarasaurus, maybe the Anchor Knot, or just possibly the, the Sonic. Yeah, it's the the nature die has really been more of a threat to Neil's board throughout this match than I think any threat that Sarasaurus would make, right? Like obviously I think Madge needs to be trying to get another big th threat on the board. So you, to your point, like you can make a shepherd and you can turn that into a sonic, you know, or a um I think it's better than making... I think Sonic's got to be better than Sarasaur here. It's it's one die cheaper. You're not going to be able to stick Shepard into a mount, right? Because Shepard takes both of your actions, so unless you had Accelerate to be able to then mount as your side action after making the Shepard, you're, you're pretty much stuck. The awkward thing is if you go for a Sonic, you're kind of possibly... Oh, Flute Mage. Investor. Here's a Flute Mage. Ooh, so let's, that is okay. So no Sonic then. We let's know. let's see if Neil is on Fester here. This is the best time for Fester. If not, this Celestial is gonna get to eat here, and he does have the Fester oh, so for the Celestial. So that's a huge Fester right there. I, I think uh, if Magipolo wanted to try and play around that, it might have been better to wait to use that Flute Mage on Exhaust, um, because of course if you're gonna if you're gonna swing in the same turn as you on Exhaust, you could save it. And uh, then if 
if the Celestial Knight is removed, you kind of still have that option of using the fleet yeah. or something else. I, I agree that's, that that's a, pot, a potential line. You, you have the risk of like Awaken State frog ping. Well, I guess you can't frog ping there, but you you have the like risk of like Awaken State small sacrifice the flute mage. And yeah, that's true. Then it's you don't get of... anywhere with it, and Neil still mm -hmm. has the has the fester in that scenario. Like Neil's still holding potential dice to make a hammer knight here if he wants to, and it's probably pretty good. I mean, Oryx, Oryx always a little down on dice compared to <laughs> their, his opponent, but with this Celestial gone, uh, I mean, I don't know how many Meteors the Symboli player is running, but... Um, uh, it's got two. Okay, so, so one one's more. been spent. Here's a Chain Creations on the Butterfly Monk. That exhausts the other Butterfly Monk book. That's a that's a nice counterplay here to slow the monks down just a little bit. Yeah, that's good. It's expensive. Expensive. And definitely opens up Neil if he is on a knight now to be able to just use that nature dice for a knight. Not that Neil needs to do anything here other than just awaken. And then attack with the monk spirit, because the monk spirit's not going to block anything, so you get a free main action off of that. Blue mage is gone now. Magipal's really kind of running out of threats. Yeah, I mean, there's still, I mean, there's still obviously twelve cards in Madge's deck, so it's not like Madge is completely out of this game. Uh, but the this life gap is going to close down very quickly. How many Golden Veils does Madge run? Uh, two. Okay, so we've only seen one Golden Veil go by, and one Fate Reflection as well which is uh, a little interesting, but not super relevant, obviously, against Festers. There is maybe a world where you use that against there like, is a the small heal. sacrifice, but... He plays heal and passes. So no Lightbringer this round. What could he play on... I mean, I, he's got to be... Neil has third Butterfly Monk book, so just going to get that other Butterfly anyways. So Magipalo does have a two fadeaways, um, so that could be interesting. Uh, but no, Neil doesn't have enough for the Hammer Knight anymore. So no, he he committed yeah. into uh, making that Salamander Monk instead. I'm sure just playing around the fadeaway, just trying to make main actions to use Awaken State here as much as possible. Um, just attack. Didn't use the Awaken. Guess guess that's okay. So, I guess he's trying to get value from, you know, the the board damage as well, um, which is interesting. I have found that generally it's better just to go for it. Yeah, I agree. Um, just close the, rate, the gap down. He's got six tokens, so it's not like he's going to be running out of them super soon anyway. Neil and I mean, at this point, he's there. pretty much guaranteed that he's going to be getting the third concentration. Meditates there a goes frost fang. fang. Will he insight that? Uh, yep, he does. He insights the frost fang. So he, he gets rid of the ancestor spirit, which the ancestor spirit is just helping you find the third concentrate, which he's not hit this game. But we go into round five now. All right, so now we know that he's hit the third concentrate. Right. What's interesting about this particular hand for the Auric now for Neil is that even making more tokens, like you're to a point where you're you only have a handful of cards you can still play. So he does uh, go ahead and use both actions on concentrate to get up to eight tokens here. Hmm. Um. So I guess he just wanted to draw his whole whole hand, his whole deck. He's but he's got two cards left. I mean. Any more than two cards played from hand, and he is in fatigue. And at 11, you're only going to do that if you know you're going to finish the game that round. And it's not a foredrawn conclusion here that the Auric player will finish this round. It's, it's very likely that Auric will end up in uh, into the 
you know, a sixth round here, if you will. So I'm sure we're going to see Celestial come back because it just represents such a huge problem for the Oric deck right now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I almost wonder if you make a Frost, if you like ceremonial Frostfang back. I wonder if you ceremonial the Master Vampire back, because the Master Vampire gives you healing as well on sure. top of. That's a very good point. So... I definitely think you want to be getting maybe some bears here and start to chip in some damage over the top. Because, I mean, at 19 life, you've only got three on. That's a, that's a lot of Awakens to go through. Correct. So you need some other stuff going on. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's it's a it's a weird. I, I'm having a hard time mathing this out right now. So I'm trying to figure out how you. I think Neil has to make a threat here, because you can't you can't risk that your opponent like makes celestial and then sets up a, a lightbringer. So I I I'm sure he'll see that he does just slam a hammer knight down. Okay. And hammer knight's probably pretty good here. In general, because you pro you definitely know you have your last fester, right? So, you your hammer knight can get in on the celestial, kill it. That's only one shepherd, so we know there's more potential shepherds for the symboli player here. There's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot more, of more left here. More uh, shepherds, but not too many great answers for the hammer knight. Really, the best one is fade away, and obviously that's. Uh, a little delayed so right. so he's just gonna right, make so the, the light bringer i think you swing with the uh monk and he meditates a fade night. meditates a fade okay he's he's threatening meteor here second meteor goes by is there only oh. two so no more meteors so then we just know he's back on celestial knight divine power buffed and the other heal goes away too yep so this is the final life total all right, so we see we see Awaken just eat up and Salamander get in for a free point of damage. So again, that life total just shrinking fast. Okay, so let's do a little math. He's got six wounds now. We know there's no more healing left. Six tokens on Auric makes 12. 12. Hammer Knight makes Plus, 15. Yeah. Um, there's only one more. So, no, both concentrates are out, so he can't charge any more tokens this round uh, he could play one more concentrate because he has that in hand so he could get one more token right so he could potentially get bear? to 16 make bear you know the celestial is going to come down and it's going to it's going to block this hammer knight no matter what right so neil's going to have to make a decision here about his cards in hand and whether or not he wants to use concentrate and fester so he has another Inflame in hand, though, right? So maybe you just play the Inflame on the Hammer Knight and then trade against the Celestial. So I don't oh. think the Symboli... Well, hmm, maybe you don't do that yet. Maybe you get some Butterfly Monks and then do that. I just saw the Fester come out of Neil's hand. I don't know how that would have happened. So I think they're going to have to go manual, bring that Fester back. Yeah, he did have the Inflame, so he's, he's definitely got Remove Celestial here from the equation. That's weird. So Neil's asking to back that up here. Paula's a green, so they're going into manual here. That should pull the Fester back. Put a Did it make him spend the die? Did he have two ceremonial there? I think it did make him spend the die. Well, so he spent two dice on concentration, three dice on hammer knight. Oh, so no, it didn't make okay. him spend the die. That's super weird error. So there's the hammer knight eating the celestial knight. That's exactly what you want in flame to do. This is a good looking in flame right here. Yeah, just crunching through that. Mm -hmm. Armor does not matter if you have a big enough hammer. 
That's right. <laughs> swing big hammers. Swing, swing Flaming big hammers. Flaming hammers, no less. That's right. I mean, I'd run scared if I had somebody on the other side with flaming hammers. No doubt. Did Neo... Oh, he did. He aftershocked his own monk spirit. Wow. Just wanting to create those main actions for awakened state, I guess. So this changes the math a little bit, because... Neo can't... He can't get to 15 here unless he just makes a bunch of little units or he makes the bear. So then, making more little units gives him more main actions, which is more awakened triggers. Right. So maybe oh, that's the better way to go. Essence Druid here. Neil's out of Fester, so that's super annoying for Neil here. No, he has the Fester in hand, right? He didn't play it. So he can oh, actually right. frog Fester this. He can actually awaken Fester if he wants, which is that's even better. better. But that puts him so that puts him at only four cards. So he's he starts going, taking. He's going to kick. fatigue. Yeah, I think it's worth it though, because this druid is just such a pain against anything. Well, anytime you can spend one dice room with a three dice unit, I think you got to do it, even if that means you're going to suffer a point of damage. That one point of damage here isn't going to matter in the end of this game, and even if Neil runs himself out of cards and takes five here, I mean, what's the symbolic player going to do? And I don't think yeah, that's going to happen. Think... I don't think there's any way for Sembali to equalize the battlefield here because both right. of the meteors are gone. So Sembali can't really ever go on the offense again. So at this right. point, it's almost like a, a waiting game. Do, does get the wing Sembali lioness back. So that lioness, that lioness is going to be able to eat um, the, the hammer knight here. I guess Neil has the option. I, he doesn't have any ceremonial dice left. I was going to say he would have the option to small sack, exhaust the lioness, which would be a pretty good way to keep that hammer knight around. But um, yeah. He that... could side action, play the other concentrate, and then get a. Oh no, he's just going for a butterfly monk here. Yeah, I think he's going to give up on the hammer knight. Yeah, it's a good chat's asking in chat what the end game is here for the Sembali player. Honestly, I'm not sure how the Sembali player turns the corner, the proverbial corner, if you will, because the lioness is going to die to these awakened state triggers, and he's going to fade it away. So that makes he, he's not even going to make the lioness this round. I'm not sure I like the fade away decision here. I guess it keeps the hammer knight from being recurred, but you know your opponent's still got at least one in hand, yeah. and and has like ability to recur anything else. So and he's got the dispel. He's gonna play dispel on the fadeaway. Oh my oh, god. Oh, you know how we were talking about in Neil and I's match from Tuesday that Dispel looked best in that match? It looks way better in this match now. Like yeah, that, that that was oh, amazing. Cause this Hammer Knight now lives. And Neil just continues to make pressure yeah i mean just let's just drop the mic on that one for sure chad that's that's you can get three. Oh, i wouldn't have attacked with all of them at once i think he's not wanting to exhaust the awakened state out I, neil tends to do this with the awakened state like he's in a he's in the driver's seat here going into round six right so that's uh, a couple extra tokens in case to KCR the like bringers and wing Linus. Exactly. So I think he doesn't want to be completely out of tokens. And and I, I get that that mindset. It is a conservative mindset, but I think it's it's probably the right mindset because you're only six away, right? So you know for a fact that right now you could get in for two damage, right? You could just you could just take Hammer Knight in if you don't think there's anything else here. Take Symboli to 17 and the two damage wins you the game. So you can go. Hammer Knight awaken and then awaken win the game. You yeah, could've, you could have done it the same way last turn as well, I guess. But you know, I, I think we'll see if Neil sees the line here. It does look like the Orc is going to get in. Orc did suffer two fatigue damage though, taking Orc down to six life remaining. But the only thing that matters here is the last point of life, as we always talk about. So there's one more Sonic that Symbali could have. Sonic is a good answer here. Because it, it soaks... Yeah, there it, is. there it is. It soaks the Hammer Knight and kills the Hammer Knight, right? 
Yeah. So, huh. Six left on some ballet, so you could swing with everything. That would give you three, and then an awaken one. state. You have two awakens, so you probably don't want to do that. You don't really want to swing unless you're actually guaranteeing. Uh, well, I think he is guaranteeing, right? Because if you if you attack with everything, the hammer knight has to get. So there's the last card meditated away for a charm power. So that would tell me he's got sympathy pain in hand. That's that's a big sympathy pain. Um. Because that's okay, going to save so we, you a point of damage. We know what is in the Symboli player's hand. There are two... If we can figure this out. Math. Two Shepherd of Lost Souls. Um, a Fate Reflection. And a Golden Veil. So it could be Golden Veil. No Sympathy Pains in the Symboli deck? No, no Sympathy Pains. Okay. So it is a Golden Veil. Um, not sure that's going to make that much difference as Aura continues to charge tokens here. There's a Shepherd. Probably bring back Celestial because it represents... Yeah, the... you can't play another Sonic, so I think it has to be Celestial. Yeah. Or and maybe... That, that is what it is. No, it, he does no, grab the Celestial no, here. No. So... Going to ping away the Shepherd here. Put another point of damage on the Simbali. Taking Symboli to 14. He tagged for 3 to 17. He's tight enough on life. I don't think he can actually do that attack right now. He's going to just have to take a main action. Pay, plays a Fate Reflection back on the Butterfly Monk. That does take heal. Does so heal. he can get out a Sarasaurus this way. Chad's stressed out. <laughs> Sorry, Chad. This is a this is not an obvious win for Auric here. It's it's really tight. So um, is there does Somali do something like side action, Sarasaurus, main, Lightbringer, and then oh I I did not realize Neil still had his main action. Yeah, this is oof. This is rough to make a Sarasaurus into this board, right? Because your bear just blocks Sarasaurus and you awaken state, kill the Sarasaurus. You do put the shepherd back in your opponent's hand, but what are they going to do with it? Right? Like, they make another shepherd, they can't mount it again. They can't play the knight that they get back into hand. So, I guess the only thing is you get the one overkill from the Sarasaurus attacking. So, that's one more blood point. Yeah. But, I mean, the, the monk can I mean, actually if you block with the monk. Oh, he's mounting yeah. the. Oh, yeah. I thought he mounted the Celestial. The Celestial moved. I was like, what is going on here? What <laughs> that, is just. That would have been. A play. Yeah, it, Ashtek, he moved the Celestial on me, so I was like sitting there and I was like, uh, why did you mount the Celestial? <laughs> so here's Small Sack, Exhausting Celestial, because you can't gift a wings of Celestial, so Sarasaurus takes one. This Sarasaurus attacks you, right? You just guard it with the Butterfly Monk, though. Yeah, and your net zero, and then you can finish it off. With Awaken. So it looks like that's what he's doing. And yep. Yeah. So that would be one more 16 and then two from the bear. So the game is just about closed out here. Yeah, and you can make one more. He's got one more concentrate left. So, And we know he's got a concentrate in hand. So even if he ends up one token away, 16 puts, puts him down I think to three. He's got another, uh, sorry, hammer knight in hand too. So. He does, yeah. And knowing that this is the last round, you're going to play your cards now without... Uh, with kind of rec not reckless abandon, but kind of reckless abandon. So we get 18. So we're one away. Yeah. Yep. That's it. One that more it. awakened state. Or closing yeah. out the game. Good game. That was a really good game. Uh, that Symbali is a really cool list. I think. I think it was probably when you're, you know, your opponent's on two ice traps. It's probably a mistake to start the Sarasaurus. You probably have to just lean into Wing Lioness, Lightbringer, and Celestial. I think if he starts the Wing Lioness, uh, Neil's in a lot of trouble uh, because that Wing Lioness just hunts everything on his board so well. Yeah, that would be really interesting to see. the The two ice traps were really strong. Yeah, uh, I think. Hey, Neil. Welcome, welcome. Hi. Good game, man. Congratulations on your victory.
Thank you. That was a very interesting game. The uh, the Celestial Knight is very good against me. Yeah. Um, it did a ton of work on you. Um, I, we were just kind of talking about whether or not it was better for Apollo to lean into Lioness and, and not on the Sarasaurus so much. Um, I thought he was going to be on Lioness. That's why I actually started the uh, Ancestor Spirit. Yeah. What um, what was your first five actually? Could you share that? Yes. Uh, let me finish uh, typing too much here. Okay. While you guys are chatting, I'll be right back. Um. Yeah. Okay. So my first five was uh f essentially five books. Um. Salamander, Prospect Bear, Butterfly Monk, Small Sacrifice, Concentration. Or not Prospect Bear, sorry. An Ancestor Spirit instead of Prospect Bear. That got replaced uh, in the last round there. Um, and I have to admit that my round one draws were just absolutely bonkers. Yeah, it's like, just really good. absolutely crazy. I mean, I, I drew 10 cards, played 9 cards that turn. So it's not like... It's not like I wasn't a favorite to hit the ice trap, um, but the ice trap was my my first draw of concentration. Obviously, my first insight missed. It was a, a crescendo. My second insight hit the fester, which I took. Um, then horsepower dr drew me a second small sacrifice, which I played. Then Concentration drew me Ice Trap, and Ancestor Spirit cycled the Fester into um, I don't remember. What was the last card I played? Second Concentration? I think, wasn't it the second Small Sacrifice? Was the last one? Or maybe I'm getting that order. order. I think that the second small sacrifice was earlier off the off the first concentration. I don't know. I oh no no, no. it replaced Fester with uh with molten gold. Oh, and I was like right. I was like, well, I guess if I can draw the one of molten gold, that's pretty good here. Yeah, uh, obviously yeah, had the golden bail, bail, but the uh, that golden yeah, bail I mean, looked really good there too, for sure. Right. I was trying to figure out how I was going to like pressure the guard a little bit and then get in uh, with the Ancestor Spirit to fester the thing. Because um, I was trying to hold the, the Ancestor Spirit book like to be the last thing I played. So if he did play the Lioness, I could maybe like get it past it. But he ended up just frog pinging it anyway because I had uh, ice trapped his Sarasaurus mount. Um, so drawing the ice trap in round one was obviously insane. Uh, drawing the ice trap in round two, um, you know, I'm very likely to have one in round two, though I guess less likely if I have it in round one. But I'm I'm not sure that uh, the Sarasaurus would have had much impact on the game because I was playing Crescendo the entire game. So I don't know it. Good luck, I Jack. I, I think that I misplayed in round. Three, when I got two damage on his Celestial Knight uh, after it attacked my um, Vampire. And I had the Fester in hand. And my thought process was, well, the thing's tapped. Uh, even if he untaps it with Simbali, I can chump block it, and I can still Fester at any time in this round. And then I realized he could have heal in hand. Uh, and I, it was a terrible misplay not to fester it right away because of heal, specifically. Um, and he actually had the heal in hand and chose to play it on himself later in that round. I think I would have played it on the Celestial Knight uh, to play around the fester. Yeah. It would have been really good there. For sure. Right, it would have essentially like screwed up my whole turn. But I love the, uh, I loved the dispel on the fadeaway. That was awesome. <laughs> I, I so I had put the dispel as the bottom card of my deck off an ancestor spirit in like round two or something. Yeah, I'm like I'm never. 
And then, obviously, we got to the juncture where my Hammer Knight was suited up with the Inflame, and I'm like, even if he plays it here, I'm, I can dispel it, and it'll be good. And I don't think that I would have lost the game if that had killed my Hammer Knight, but obviously it made it much easier to win when, essentially, Hammer Knight eats any unit he plays. And, and, and Apollo, if he doesn't play a unit, then it kills him. Apollo's in chat and responded. He goes, yeah, I realized I should have healed the Celestial Knight there. I was just running out of main actions and was afraid to pass. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I think he played the game uh, very well. Like, I... I managed to not play against a single deck archetype that I had prepared for in all six rounds. Um, this was not <laughs> one that I was prepared for, and I was not certain that my first five was correct. Um... I thought about starting Ice Trap, and I thought about starting Fester, both of those things, but uh, you having the Golden Veil made me choose not to start a Fester, and the Ice Trap, like, if you go uh, Anchor Knot into Ceresaurus, it is good, uh, because the Anchor Knot will for sure eat one of my guys, and you'll get your awesome 3-3. But I just figured that, like, I could grind that out, um, what I hadn't considered was you just starting Celestial Knight, because like, the <laughs> the Dispel looked good in that game, but it's actually in the deck to kill Root Armor, because my deck has such a hard time with Armor 1. Mm -hmm. um, so the Celestial Knight was a big problem. It's like, it's like Major Apollo was listening to our discussion post-match on Tuesday and went, oh, I have a perfect armored unit to, <laughs> to open yeah, up. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I did end up getting the focus on the small sacrifice very early. Yeah. So that helped. That, like, shored up that. But I, once he put that into play, I was pretty much, uh, like, resigned to just chump blocking that thing a it, bunch of times this game. It looked like you were on your back heel against it quite a bit. And he, he did a nice job with the Lightbringer to get in early. And, and if that... And, uh, that's a good point to bring up because I think you played the Lightbringer very well. Obviously, Lightbringer is not very good against my deck because I have just a million little crappy guys to attack with that I don't care about. But the way that you chose to guard for it was very well informed because um, the time that you just you did choose to guard for it, the one one that was very impactful, the other times you chose not to guard for it because it was potential that I could make a 2-1 and actually get a damage on your Celestial Knight. So you wanted to keep your Phoenix board guard up, and I thought that was very good. Um, yeah. And it, play. it it looked like like I said just through this match as a as an observer and a commentator that if if Apollo had given up on the mount that nature die would have kept your two one in check the whole game right like it it just never... yeah it was good to it was good to snipe it off round one for sure and I was worried about that happening but there's like nothing I can really do right I didn't think that this was a good frostback bear game because. Uh... Well, he's just got a bunch of units that are big, Prospect right? Prospect Bear against Sarasaurus is not super good for the, the Right, bear. That, that was the biggest thing, was, like, I didn't want to risk the bear into Sarasaurus nonsense. Sure. Um, because if I start bear, then I definitely can't start uh, Ice Trap. So, like, there was no way that I protected from the bear. And he also has just, like, five other units in his deck that kill bear, and right. bear doesn't kill back. So um, I, I audibled into the bear late because it's obviously better than... Uh, the ancestor, ancestor spirit. When I have no cards left in my pile, well, and and you no longer needed that third concentrate, right? You got to awaken on two concentrates this game, so you, there wasn't yeah. a need to continue to dig. And, for and I was ready to discard that third concentrate uh, to my my uh, crescendo, crescendo in hand, but he was showing the the golden veil. The, not the I thought it was. Veil. I would have run into Golden Veil, but he was showing the uh, Fate Reflection. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like the whole game, and and he had meditated for it once, so I just put him on Fate Reflection and didn't want to even try. Yeah, I thought it was really smart how you just held on to that third Concentrate and didn't play it because you really didn't need it. And obviously, when you're starting to tick the the fatigue damage, every card that you keep in hand. Um, yeah, I, I admit that. I... that was, I thought that was that was good. It was pretty greedy of me to uh, discard four cards in round three. Yeah, <laughs> I discarded four cards to draw two, but I just it was like this weird thing where I discarded uh, Nature's Wrath, Nature's Wrath, Root Armor, uh, additional Inflame, and I'm like, there's no way that I'm going to play any of these cards this game. So all I'm doing 
is like not milling myself by keeping them in hand. And I didn't think that that was good enough. I, I wanted like some action. Would you, in hindsight, it looked like Inflame almost ended up being an MVP for you, especially in the late game. So in hindsight, well, would you have kept that Inflame? Would you change no, that decision? I, I only need one. Okay. The second one is never good, probably. Okay. No, I just uh, But you're right. Like, Inflame's great. Like, I yeah. think that card is very, very good. Yeah, he, looked... he had meditated... He, he played the, uh, the Swordsman meditated to Snake... And obviously, with no cards left in his pile, I knew it was in his hand, so I knew he had the Golden Veil. And I'm like, all right, so uh, I guess I just eat it. This Hammer Knight has done its work already this, this right. game. So if I just eat it here, I'm up three dice, and I am still have board presence with half a Sally and two Butterflies, and have him, you know, I, I had to do... Six damage that round, and I had three awake encounters still, plus two untapped. Uh, yeah, I I think I think I was more so. referring to like I saw an early line play where you could have taken a monk spirit and in flame attacked into the celestial knight and forced it to exhaust and take a point of damage and then turn on the fester. Maybe you didn't have the fester at that particular moment in the game, but I just wondered if that was a a potential line where you were. That was a line that I had in mind the whole game was like that the in flame is good against celestial knight. Uh, for the specific interaction you said, but but to your point, like I had the fester in round one, but I bottomed it mm -hmm. uh, off the ancestor spirit. So in round two, I didn't have it. So even though that line was there for me, I didn't have the fester. I had the fester in round three, but uh, yeah, it, it was. Didn't, it didn't matter because I got the damage on it through his attack into vampire. It was wild that you pulled that molten gold and then he had the, the golden. Oh my God. That was so bonkers. <laughs> I, I, I was like, really? I was like debating on what I wanted to do with my horse head. Ah. And I was like, okay, I can side action. If I draw something, uh, I can play the fester and what I draw. Is that better than having a two one plus a look at an additional card? And, uh, I'm like, I just want the 2 1. That's like a much safer play. And I figured, like, whatever I drew, I was just going to bottom and keep the fester. Right. But I drew the 1 of Molten Gold. I'm like, wow, this well, literally is the best you drew, card I could draw. The, you drew the second Concentrate, because then you played Concentrate and drew the Molten Gold. For oh, the you're, you're right. I drew. It was even better than that. I drew second Concentrate. <laughs> yeah, I was like, concentrate I like what concentrate a sequence yeah. that was. <laughs> the Molten Gold. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was wild, man. I was like, I, oh the, like. God. Literally, the only thing that would have been better is if I had gone concentrate, concentrate, then molten gold because right. I did have a dice <laughs> left over in round one. Yeah, yeah, um, that's awesome. But yeah, so. I and and he had the golden veil, so it wasn't if if you didn't start gold veil, Maj Apollo, you you were not going to win that game because I was the luckiest duck that ever ducked, and uh, but it was a game because you started a good first five, and Celestial Knight's very good against me. Yeah. All right. Well, All right. So. Go ahead. Oh, I got I got one last question for you. This was your last game in the tournament, right? Is that yes. correct? Yep. Do you, what um what changes in hindsight would you make to this deck now that you've made it through the one hundred percent? I would play a turtle hmm. instead of the uh, ancestor spirit. I would put instead? in one one right because the whole point of ancestor spirit was like to attack the O twos. And I found my deck to be good enough against the O2s anyway. Like, it's just, it's just easy to, like, trade half a Salamander and a, a small sacrifice for one of them. And that's good enough with whatever additional stuff is going on. At least that's what I found in the, in the six games I played. Um, the problem that I had was, uh, and, and Ancestor was supposed to shore up this a little bit, was that they don't have blockers for Frostback Bear. Yeah, and uh, Ancestor Spirit just doesn't do that. It doesn't matter because if they have Frostback here, they have frogs in their dice, so it'll just never happen. And yeah. um, in two of the games that I lost, I lo I took a bunch of damage from Frostback Bear, and then in the other game, I took a bunch of fro damage from Frostback Bear and additional damage from Mind Fog because of Frostback Bear. So uh, I would just put in a, a single turtle. Um, and a single turtle dice uh, just to have that as a first five against the foggy index. So, 
So and I'd probably play a backtrack if I'm changing to eternal dice. Just yeah, I was gonna say I was gonna ask if I was gonna ask if you're gonna add a backtrack and or um, even a fate reflection. You know, I think the one thing about backtrack and auric is that because you've got the card draw, it's you can even first five it in certain situations, and that's right. You you have the potential to first five it. Usually won't, but yeah, I mean, just I wouldn't splash time only for backtrack ever. But yes. if I'm putting in the time dice for the turtle, I would put in a backtrack also. And honestly, just like take out a fester for it because they're so similar. Um, something like that. Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think that would be that would be a really good addition to your deck, Neil. I mean, like... And turtle's just so good, right? Like, oh, it's, it's I mean, ridiculously there's good. Like, there's like some part of me that thinks that like cutting uh cutting the small sacrifices and playing turtle in its place is better because focus turtle is so similar to how small sacrifice works anyway how you're using small um, sacrifice for sure right because you very rarely right. use you, the damage output you, from small sac in the games that you've seen on uh on stream i have not used it for damage very much but definitely there were games that uh essentially i traded two dice for two dice where my opponent would make something like a bear and then I would trade, like, Sally attack, small sacrifice, ping it, Sally attack, for the three damage right. on it. Um, and stuff like that. Uh, so the, the damage portion is very relevant because in the games that you're not against these big threats, when you're against the go-wide threats, having the, uh, the ability to kill a one life unit and also reset your Salamander is very good. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, this is yeah. I, I this don't. Is, I don't know that focus turtle is actually good, but I think single turtle is definitely good. So Both. expensive to focus turtle. That's it this. is. Yeah. It is. Um, well, this is this has been uh, obviously a great end of our Swiss rounds to watch uh, Inquisitor and Creve Dog go at it in two very different styles of decks for sure, and then to follow that up with Orc into Symboli, like. Symboli is such a unique Phoenix born. And I I love Major Apollo's Symboli here. It's it's really cool and does a lot of neat things. And I think outside of playing Auric, who puts eleven ready spells on the board, there's a lot of tech in the Symboli list that could be pretty punishing to a regular deck for sure. Right. So right. the deck definitely has has a lot of good trades. And like a couple two for ones. Yeah. So it's very easy for this deck to get ahead on cards. It just it will never do that against Auric. Right. Because of the nature of Auric. Right. I I uh Yeah, I, I think, you know certainly Major Apollo has inspired me to look at Symbali and figure out how I want to play her. Uh, I like this version better than the super combo y versions. You know, there's some sure. people that like jump into Symboli and they're like, I'm going to make this one giant guy and lean really hard into the wings. But this deck is just like a grindy kind of battlefield deck that has wings as a tool. Yeah, I just wonder if this deck, like, and, and I, I mean, to, I'm not wanting to sound like I'm criticizing. I, I feel like if you drop the Sarasaurus for just a Frostback Bear, shore up your, your dice spread for making bears, like, you probably can create real threats that your opponent has to answer the bear enough that your knights and druids and you know sonic swordsmen get to stand around a lot more. That's like a micro version of the thing we talked about with uh, who played some Bali the other week that we watched Cam maybe yeah might have been um, where you're just having the mount along with the wings and the purify your your usage of allies is stretched. Mm-hmm. Um, to where like you only have so many allies in play. Like there were the one Sarah Source that came into play. No, sorry, the one Purify that that was played bounced this uh, Celestial Knight. Right. Which that that's like it was obviously fine, but it's like that's not where you want to be, right? No. And, and no. I, my my lucky ice traps like put a big damper on that, but um, yeah. I mean, you, you sort of saw like. I mean, Anchor Knot and Flute Mage and Polarity Mage and Rosefire Dancer and Shepherd are all good enough on their own to not need to be mounted, right? So, like, they all do things for you that you can, you're happy to live with and give you good Purify targets if your opponent leaves them 
around. And to be fair, like if you're not playing Auric, who is awake, who can just shoot down all of these things with impunity, you you get a lot of value off of Purify on those things because they all have good I, I was, battlefield effects. My sequence of draws was very good against his Sarasaurus start because right. I had the uh, I had the two ice traps for the early ones, and then I got awakened and. And Ma- Major Apollo made the uh, the point in the chat after the game. The early pass uh, was very, very beneficial to me. Right in round in round two, because you just once Oric has used his concentrations, he's ready to pass. Like I'll pass all day, because essentially I just right. got two counters for free. Like I think I I think I went down a dice or two to board presence to do that, but. It wasn't so much that I was like way behind or anything, and I'm just like, yeah, I, I'm, I pass. We're gonna right. just go and and that way I was able to 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 you guys' earlier point, uh, play with only the two concentrations. Yeah, I mean, I I I'm look like I I think this is a really cool list, and I think it's onto something. I just think like if you go down to four divine and go second nature die, and you cut the Sarasaurus alone just for, um, yeah, the. But- I, I suppose there are first better. vibes where, like, you can start Lioness in place of the Sarasaur, and it's kind of like that. Um, I wonder about a little more burn, too, in the Sambali, just because, I mean, we even kind of saw it in this, how it gets a lot of damage in early, but then it's kind of hard to get the last few points in late game. So, like, maybe some Molten Golds and some Frostbite or something like that might be able to... You know, just get to that closing out point. Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think the common expectation when you play Symbali is that somebody's going to open Double Knight on you, right? So if you don't open Double Knight, you have to have something that's reasonably threatening like Double Knight that's not Double Knight. And because there, there's a risk that, like, the mind game you right, can play this, with your opponent is like... This deck has Sarasaur in that slot, right? Right, right. But, yeah. I, but I just think Sarasaur is just too... It's too costly and too risky... And that was my experience in season three when I or season four when I played the coal list with Sarasaur. Like I just got blown out in games because I chose Sarasaur over Frostback Bear. And yeah. you know, that that's a that tells you everything you need to know about mounts in a competitive space. Yeah, I, I mean I, I like it the way that it's built now. Sure. I mean, you could go Frostback Bear instead of Lioness or something, but the Sarasaurus like, there are matchups where it's just absolutely great, right? I'm sure, and, yeah. Like, in in theory, my deck should be one of them, but I drew all the ice traps. Um, but, like, imagine if you, like, just, for example, you sat down and played the mirror. Like, you were playing Majapalo Simbali against Majapalo Simbali. You definitely start Sarasaurus over any of those other absolutely. things. Absolutely, yeah. Because there's nothing to interact with it. And you're going to run into games like that where I like the Sarasaurus a lot because he is already playing, like a good sp- spread of value dudes to uh um benjamin first time bounce. chat man welcome he says i like the mount with fire archer Ad- adds a bit of burn yeah i mean you could definitely pivot into uh, a burn back end with this and you know if you go if you go a little heavier in nature you could easily set up with this four spell board um Frostbites, if you really wanted to, you know you could play some molten golds i mean there's there obviously you could build a more traditional nature version of Simbali that has the ability to open double night but then um <clears throat> and doesn't even need to be double night like that's kind of more just a commentary on Sarasaurus itself i think that this deck is an example of the best mode of Sarasaurus, whether it has fire archer or whatever other value guys right alongside it like you want to have the pivot because there are times when like your Sarasaurus will never come into play and you don't want to start it but right um so I, I was listening to somebody talk this week. And oh, I wanted... oh, really, Major? That's, that's pretty funny. He said the, uh, the mirror match happened almost exactly how you described it. <laughs> yeah. I, uh... I, I was wondering if in this dice spread, if you even start a, a one of Archosaurus. And the reason why, and, and, but the reason why I say that is because um, there is a world where, I mean, if you change it into, a, if you're in the Fire Archer plan, you're going into to Ceremonial, like... If you play a psychic vampire, what's your opponent do? Do they kill the vampire to not let you archie? Do they lose? Yeah, but a what card? do you do with your archosaurus? You mount the psychic immediately. Like you play psychic, 
Your opponent either kills the Psychic and loses a card, or you mount it. I, I don't like that. I think any knight is better than Archosaurus. Like, you're you're talking about making a five di- a four dice play and just, like, getting it killed, and it's not even a combo with Symboli because you can't untap it. Sure. It, but it's, it is a threat, right? So, like, if you open with knight and they remove your knight, which is what happens a lot in Symboli, and, right? And, and what do you do if they kill your Psychic then? I mean, you got a card. I think I think that's okay. You're you're still on four dice plan, no matter which way you go, Ceratops or Archosaurus. It's still the same amount of dice. You could still start a second ally for that purpose if you really wanted to. Right? I I would advise everyone in chat not to try to play Archosaurus Mount in competitive. But, I mean, uh, it, that's it does... interesting. I feel like there's some value that it has just in being like a one of or a two of in some decks because it is such a huge. Like four or five is Yeah, it's very big, but like I and and to that point, I have started advocating that one of Gornrock Brawler is good in a lot of situations. But Gornrock doesn't require you to do other stuff and take an extra action. Sure. I agree um, with that. And I don't Anyways. think Gornrock's good in this kind of deck, but uh I I think that Archosaurus, you know, it's just too slow and bad. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, really I, good in draft. Uh, I think Archosaurus is interesting if you have like some stuff like seeds and close combat and stuff like that, where you can really leverage the four tech. Sure, absolutely. I mean, I, right, four five is big, but the the issue is that you're you end up trading four dice for your opponent's like ping fester, right? Like that's and and extra time. And if you have all those other cards, that's fine. But if they ping fester you, then all those other cards are also dead. And yeah, I just, I just wonder. I just wonder if it's the if it's your knight, you know, on the back end, right? So like, if you like, you're you're spending the same amount of dice to make a three three with overkill in uh, in the, the, the difference being that the archosaurus is repeatable throughout the game. The ceratosaurus, is. I agree. Right, sorry, the ceratosaurus is repeatable throughout the game, and it has. Re- like repeatable synergy with the allies in the deck, whereas this is a one shot thing. And if you're talking about vampires specifically, it has no synergy with the vampires. Yeah, but you you could still start in your other positions. You could still start anything else. Like you still have uh, the ability to start lioness. You still have the ability to start um, a, a bear I, and not play the bear I, round one, I, or at least not. Play I will it make this. I will make the statement that if you put it into play and it attacks, like, and it survives. It's definitely great. Sure. Even if it dies immediately the following round, you've done great if you survive it one round. If it dies in round one, you're probably lost your first five. That's, I mean, and, and that's the gamble you take with cards like that, right? Like, it just... The not having recover and taking up half your turn to do is it's just, it's so risky. Well, I guess you... I would agree that it's not a good first round card. I think it's more interesting as like something that you draw into the deck that you play in round two or round three, where like you have the card in hand, um, but you have other sources to spend your dice on. So you only play it. You don't need to worry about keeping allies alive because you can play other stuff if they kill your allies. But if they don't kill your allies, well, now you're threatening to drop this four five. Right. Right. I mean, the the issue then, if you're not playing on first fighting it, then the and again, all of these plays that you guys are coming up with are just fine. Um, the reason that I I would not build a deck that way is because it seems too risky. Because you're right that like if you draw it in round two or three, it's much better than in the first five. But the problem there being that in order to draw it in round two or three consistently, you have to play multiple copies of this card that. A large percentage of times you draw it is not going to be good. Sure. And is that the kind of card you want as as a two over three of in your deck? That's. Like, I, I definitely wouldn't play it as a, I definitely wouldn't play it as a two of. I think it'd be a one of kind of card, and and I'm not sure that it even started, but it can be a real answer, especially in the late game if you've it, and, and when you play something like uh, Sembali, who has a bunch of knights that sort of eat up removal automatically. It 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 is a it is a threat right at the end of the game or in the middle of the game if you get it uh i'm not saying you'd want to commit to multiple copies to get to it you just it, it's like it's just another card in your deck at that point and it's just like worse than 
the other knights though well but i'm saying play, i'm saying playing it alongside those knights right so we're, we're not talking about we're not talking about instead of we're in inclusion of you know what i mean and i, I like i and and i i know what it does and like if you want to play it, that's fine. It's a big giant guy. And in the mirror match of a deck like you just saw played, like if you're playing against another deck full of knights, then it's good. If you're playing against a deck full of anything smaller than knights, it's worse than every other knight because your knights are already going to kill the stuff that they're fighting. And they have like when they kill stuff abilities, the only time the archer source is actually better than them against things smaller than knights is when it attacks face for one additional damage. Yeah, I mean, that's that's how I see the game going. It's just it's hard for me to picture a game in my mind where the Archosaurus takes over the board. Yeah, I don't think instead it takes of just being an additional knight. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I guess it it depends. Like when you look at something like Simbali and you look at something like um, Odette or uh, some of these like five battlefield Phoenixborns, Oryx a good example as well. Like. Depending, I mean, Oryx is a very different game, so maybe Oryx is a bad example, but I just want to, I just want to point this out as a five battlefield, so it just came to my brain. Like, generally speaking, five battlefield, you want to have five power, impactful units on the battlefield. You can probably get away with like one non-power unit, like a like a Gilder is a good card because it's got unit guard and it does something when it comes into play, and those cards are good answers are, are, are good of as good as a one of out of your five, right? You Oryx a little different. Like you're playing an Oryx that's very different because of the ease of focusing small sacks. So you can kind of get away with having really small units on the battlefield. And that works for Oryx because of the dice sync of concentration. And, and with the exception of Frostwick Bear, I think it works for every Phoenix form. Like, except for when you're playing against Frostwick Bear. I really do. That that was like when we were talking about why Frostwick Bear needs to exist. Because I think the chump blocky decks are too good otherwise. So Benjamin says, uh, uh, hopefully with, with new releases we get more cheap units with good interplayability. I think mounts get a lot better with more one, two dice, good interplayability allies. Yeah, I, I mean, we I, got Swifty. That card is off. Like, Swifty has to be the best thing for Archosaurus that ever was. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. I'd be kind of scared of more allies. Like, we already have, yeah, like Swift Messenger, Raptor Herder. I, I'm scared to get more allies in that vein of that good interplay abilities for one yeah, die. Yeah, it, it. I mean, Anchor Knot is also just extremely good, right? It's, it's slept on. It's not played very often, but it's an extremely powerful uh, ally with that basic cost and enter do one point of damage and make an O one. I mean, that O one is a good chump against everything but Frostback Bear, right? <laughs> like that's that's the bottom line. Um, I think Anchor Knot's very good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so and and. It's funny that you that you say that, like, um, and both of you made like both halves of the point, where, or maybe it was it was Benjamin in the chat. Like, if we see more good one dice allies, it does increase the power level of mounts. It also decreases the power level of Archosaurus specifically because as things that are good to do get cheaper the things that are cheaper and more efficient will always overshadow the things that are more expensive. Sure. Because of the dice investment risk. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the I think what hurts Archosaurus more than anything is just the Gigantic. I actually think it's a playable unit outside of Gigantic. What's, what's wrong with Gigantic? Like, there's, instead of being terrifying, you mean? Kind well, of just, yeah, because there's too many two-life units in, in the game now. So it can't two-life buy. units can't block it, right? Yeah, but, it's Gigantic 2. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So it, it's... There's, I guess, there's like almost nothing that blocks this that, that right that so it isn't giant. I don't know. I, I I I'm curious about it. I guess as we move forward, because uh, obviously things like Flock Shepherd, not seeing a ton of play, but good against uh, Terrify. Um, so maybe Gigantic Two has a place in the meta, just based on on what we've seen come out up to this point. Um, if there ever is a like. A meta where it gets hyper hyper slow and the units that are good are like uh the o2s and flock shepherd it does go up in power level a little bit because flock shepherd doesn't allow those things to block it like they do frostback bear right but you have to remember also that like like those kind of decks have captivate those kind of decks have redirect ash spirit and again you're just like 
they they probably also have fester and yeah i mean look fester and fester and frog are are a real thing no doubt i mean you can protect it in a million ways now uh depending you can on protect it in two ways i guess three no. ways because you are in divine already yeah you can pre- i mean i'm just saying like there's a there's there's answers outside of you know in, in your splash colors in these decks so like if divine and, and divine and nature are your power if those are your primary colors, you can easily go illusion for fate reflection or time for fate reflection. You can go illusion for particle shield. I mean, there's a way. There's many ways to turn off ping fester, and if that's your opponent's plan for removing this thing, you know, you can also just go divine and go like, uh, uh, what? Uh, pff, what's the card I'm thinking of? Um, Angelic rescue. Angelic rescue. And then the only thing you're really risking at that point is like your opponent fading you away. Your opponent two shadows in you after you've gotten value, or right. um, and, or sort of virtue just, from Odette. There's nothing right. else. That's and and everything you just said is the exact same as every other night, right? So really, what you should be doing is comparing the upside of Artosaurus versus other night, and the gigantic two versus Flock Shepherd is one thing that it has over it. The only other thing that I see that it has over it is that it attacks for one additional damage to face. The other units are, like, good enough. You know what I might... Like, you know what even, I might look even at? Even if this didn't require a mount, I think that, like, Hammer Knight would be better, because it has Recover, too. So you can, like, trade with something, sure, and it, then Hammer Knight recovers, whereas this does not. So what I might be looking... I might look at and uh, kind of figure out is how much... Obviously, Majestic Titan gets hurt by being Gigantic 1, but the Archer Source is better here. The... The um, thing I might look at here is, um, yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any extra dice into Archosaurus, Chad. I just wouldn't. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think unless that that's you're protecting fine. it with like, like if, if that counts. Literally, you're playing this as an additional knight for yourself, right? So you should treat it like that. So if you sure. think that knight rune armor is good against a deck, you should play Archosaurus rune armor. Like your your investment is so high into this thing that you need this. Like if it dies, you lose. Like. Well, I don't know if that's true. That's that's a pretty excessive. Okay, if it dies, you lose seventy percent of your games. I don't. I still don't agree with that. That's like saying yeah, I don't know. if you make a, if you make a three dice investment in another unit. Now, again, I if know I that... won fifty percent of games that this died, I would play this as a three of in every deck. Like, but it, there's but a reason it... you don't start knights now. <laughs> well, if you that's lose not a true. Knight People start to knights. Ping fester, you're not immediately out of it yeah so I guess I, in, a, I, in a similar way if you lose at Arcosaurus, you're not immediately out of it i mean it sure hurts it, a it, lot but. it hurts i mean like it's like it's like uh it's like anything right if you lose a gorn rock brawler to ping fester Archosaurus and gorn rock brawler are on the same level in terms of uh loss so I agree with that okay I so the upside of gorn rock is like a jillion times more yeah i don't know if i completely agree with that i think gorn rock requires work to do something with it um, you mean like an extra action and putting an ally into play? Does that work? Well, it depends on what that ally does for you, right? I mean, yeah, at, the, and, at the end of the day, like, this, the ally doesn't this, do zero. So what is the work you're talking about with Gornrock? Like, you don't think that attacking with extra guys at the same time or, like, activating Lulu's Spark is work that you're already doing, that you want to be doing, in the similar way that putting an anchor knot into play I, is what I mean, you want to be doing? I'm not going to spark Gornrock. Why would you ever spark Gornrock? Because it puts a status, status counter on it, so you can untap it. Sure, if if it's your last status token, great. I'm I'm gonna venture to guess that in ninety percent of games, you're not untapping Gorn Rock round one, right? So so the Gorn Rock ability is virtually zero until you get into I, round two and it survives. I think well, it's a lot easier than you think it is. I know. I, it's mean, easy. I don't know that I, happens every round one but like if you're playing it round one you should be trying to do it round one i'm saying that gigantic two can do something immediately in round one well in, in terms of converting four damage to the face if, if right. that's what and, you want and that's all it's doing though that's sure. that's what i'm saying it's like is four damage to the face for three dice and three actions good enough or for four but, dice but it doesn't have enough. to be but it doesn't have to be four damage to the face so i'm just i'm just counterpointing this a little bit because I think I don't think this card is super great. You know that I've I've played I've tried to play this card, but I do think it right. has potentially some places where it it does work extremely well. And I think if Gornrock has places, I think Archosaurus has places. That's all I'm saying. I I just I don't agree. And if you like 
chat, if you want to play for fun, just if you want to play it to prove me wrong, go ahead. But, like, Gorn Rock is so much better than this card. <laughs> like, it, it's not even the same class. I don't know. I, I, I guess I don't share that same sentiment. But because I think you have to build... Um, Chad saying Archosaurus with Lulu and Spark. That's what Neil just said as well. Um, um, I don't think that Archis that's actually... Archosaurus is, Archosaurus is not good with Spark because... Yeah. Changing to a five five from a four five doesn't make any difference. Right. I think the only the, thing the spark on on Gorn Rock is only good if you use the status counter to untap. It. Here's what I'll say: the only thing that I think Archosaurus offers is if you are playing it alongside another knight in your first five, you're most likely going to be able to play your knight immediately, build pressure, and force your opponent to remove your early knight, and then respond with an Archosaurus where your opponent doesn't have removal. And if you've done your first knight correctly, you've already eaten the Phoenixborn Guard. If it didn't I, I will get removed, say that with that specifically, Ardosaurus is better in closed deck than it is in open deck. Sure. Um, because you're just trying to be like kind of cheeky then. Right. I, I actually, um, like, I think there's possibly lists out there that still exist where you can do like a one of Archosaurus, one of Summon Shining Hydra, and you've, you, you've got like two extra knights that are not the normal what people expect. And if they don't I have like answers, Hydra way more than Archosaurus. I I think Hydra is close to playable. Like maybe. I, it just I, it it sucks because you have to you have to play it instead of Hammer Knight or something else because sure. like you can play like a in your split normally when I build decks anyway I like to have three or two of one knight and then one additional one because you want to be able to have double knight start. Sure. And that's not something you can do with. Uh, Hydra, obviously. Well, I, I, think there's, I think there's cheap enough spellboard options these days, now, in particular, where you can, you can go super cheap spellboard. My, my other thought with Archosaurus is, like, you know, possibly in, like, a Canyon Shelter situation, because does Canyon Shelter destroy it? No. It doesn't. No, I don't think so. You don't so. get the mount back. You don't? I was wondering my, about Because the first deck I built when, when Canyon Shelter got spoiled was a uh, Cerasaurus mount, actually. Because you have enough dice that you can go... Uh, yeah, it's, it's just remove it. It's not destroyed. So. Yeah, you don't get the ally back. But That's I, I thought, I thought you got cool. the ally back. So it's actually better with Sarasaurus than it is with Archosaurus, if that's the case. Yeah, yeah. Because you can go Raptor Herder, Sarasaurus, uh, Canyon Shelter, attack with Sarasaurus, suck <laughs> up the Sarasaurus, Gates... Make additional Raptor Herder, additional Sarasaurus, and <laughs> a sure. third Sarasaurus out of the shelter. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, uh, let's, let's wrap up this stream. Uh, Leonard, thank you so much for spending some time with us tonight. If you guys that are in chat with us tonight are not following Leonard on Twitch, uh, why? Why not? It's easy to hit that follow <laughs> button. I mean, there's, there's really no reason to not. Leonard puts out great content, uh, continues to play through Shuffle Bus, and all of his matches are streamed, so... If you're looking for more Shuffle Bus tournament stuff with, uh, you know, with this in mind, he's just another resource for that, and you should be following him. So I'm so glad that you came on tonight and got a chance to spend some time with us. Um, this is the end of Swiss. So guess what, everybody? Next week, the real matches really get going. We've got top eight <laughs> match coverage next week. We'll get to see who's going to come out on top. We'll also get to see who all are new qualifiers for the Invitational in January. So I'm really excited to see. I think there's going to be quite a few new qualifiers this season. Um, so well, I, I would guess that there's less than eight. Th there is less than eight. I do think <laughs> that's true. But not very many less than eight, I think, which is pretty wild. Um, this season are... has been really fun. Yes, and, uh... and, and it's a real testament to just how competitive Shuffle Bus has gotten across the board. Um, and I think, you know, everybody has played uh, some really cool decks and had an opportunity to really... Uh, learn a lot from their play and, and be able to uh, expand on that into future stuff. Um, be on the lookout here after the holidays might sneak in a little bit, something fun here. So we're, we're, uh, we're, I'm, I'm playing around with this idea a little bit. I uh, haven't even talked to Neil about it. So, um, you know, oh we'll boy. see. Oh Ooh. boy. <laughs> so we'll see if we can sneak something fun in, in December here. I know everybody's begging for a little bit of something to do in December. Uh, you know that holiday yeah, season. It will be. It will be uh, quite a stretch before season seven starts. Yeah. So we might we might sneak a little something fun in there, starts. and just see what uh, what comes out of it. So just be on the lookout. We'll talk about it on stream. But uh, remember that after December eleventh, is it eleventh, Neil? Is that when our invitational was? 
the 8th of January. 8th of January. Uh, no, 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 but originally it was 11th of December, right? Oh, yes. The 11th of December was the original So date. after December 11th, Shuffle Bus will be off air until after the first of the year. So even if we do something fun, there won't be coverage for it. It'll just be for fun. Um, so maybe we'll do a little closed deck. Maybe we'll do something else. I don't know. We're going to have some fun. So anyways, let's just be ready for that to, to come down the pipe here. And then we will be back Tuesday with uh, hopefully the first two top eight stuff. of our top eight. Yeah. So we'll get two top eights in on Tuesday, two top eights. And is that right? Yeah. Two top eights on Tuesday, two top eights on Thursday. Uh, and then I'm hoping we'll get the top four in before um, before Thanksgiving. And then, That would be tough. We only have one stream before. We only have three streams before Thanksgiving. I know. So we might, we might have to sneak a surprise stream in somewhere to try to get this all done. I'd like to get the whole season wrapped up before Thanksgiving if we can. So maybe we'll talk to our opponents next week. We'll do a special stream uh, somewhere in there. We'll figure that out. And then... Um, We'll go from there. So maybe over the weekend or something, get those top fours done so that we can have Tuesday the 23rd be the final. So we'll see. But um, yeah, again, Leonard, thanks so much for your time. And uh, hey, it was thanks a for pleasure. having me on. That was a yeah. lot of fun. It was a pleasure being with you tonight and chatting about this game. It was a real brain burner. So I appreciate having you alongside for it. So, all right. We'll see you all next week. Have a fantastic weekend. Good luck if you haven't played your final round.